Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to your very own Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel. I'm your biology teacher Aishwarya and as a part of Crash Course 2.0, today we are going to be having the complete A to Z of the chapter Heredity. Of course the evolution part is not there but of course we will be doing Heredity today. So I hope all of you are super duper excited for today's class. I hope you have your notebooks and pens ready with you, have your textbooks open with you as well because in our our class today in the next three hours we are going to master the chapter that all of you are super scared of right most of you will be like ma'am this is not our chapter some of you will be like ma'am this chapter is super easy but nonetheless for your future as well not just for your exams but for your future as well this chapter is very important and the basics you learn today will help you in your future so good evening to Tanish, Kaisha, Khushi, uh, Anshul, Ria, Diksha good evening everybody good evening and everyone very quickly please let me know if my audio my video and my screen and what I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you yes is it good to go I hope we are not facing any technical difficulties today good evening everyone good evening I can see Jay Diksha Asta Navya Nitishri Mantesha oh my god all my regular students lot of new students in the class as well so good evening to everybody here and yes there are few things that you need to have with you make sure you have your textbooks open with you okay have your textbooks open with you have a notebook and pen so that in case if you want to write down any of the important things you have that as well and last but not the least have a bottle of water as well because considering today class is going to be pretty long it's going to be for three hours so don't worry Ma'am, I skipped whole case base for heredity. See, heredity is very easy. Like I said, case based, competency based questions can come from this, and we know that a lot of questions can be challenging, which is why we will make sure that all of especially Ankita ma'am and I we take you through it with your end-to-end -end preparation and for those of you who have your birthdays today happy birthday for those of you who are new to my class right I'm Aishwarya I teach biology mainly also I help you out with SST as well yes so today we will not be doing evolution because as a part of your CBSC board we see that it has only heredity so no evolution today okay and of course for those of you who have been regular to our channel right you know that we are you know we make sure that we help you out with your end-to-end -end preparation and we give you lots of free courses to help you out with it so if at all you feel like ma'am I'm struggling a little bit with my board preparation and I don't know where to study from first and foremost please make sure that you subscribe to our channel right now okay everybody please make sure you hit the subscribe button right away because here all of us teachers are here for you to make sure that you do your board preparation properly right so so we make sure that we focus on helping you prepare now along with this if you feel like ma'am we need to have a lot of practice we need to do a lot of previous year questions we need to do sample paper mock test practice test then you know that all of this happens right here so everybody please make sure you go ahead and you subscribe right now and to everybody who's asking me two questions ma'am heredity is hard to understand heredity is hard to understand I know but it's important that you need to know that you need to build your basics for this chapter which is why I'll spend my time in building your fundamentals now if if you don't pay attention to fundamentals then it will continue being tough right so build your basics today spend your time today learn the basics and then it will become easy second thing is mentee there mentee will be there of course you know in crash course what do we do we start with your chapter summaries we do subjective questions then we give you some hacks to study while of course in the end we will be doing the mcqs as well so this is our plan this is what we are going to be doing today what can you expect this is what you can expect today and why did Kriti ma'am not take metals and non-metals Kriti ma'am wasn't keeping well bacha so now she's back in full health and this week metals non-metals carbon and its compounds all the chapters will be covered so don't worry about it see if we have promised you we will go ahead and we will deliver it right so everyone like I said today's class is going to be three hours we are going to get started but quickly everyone can we all hit the like button and give me a quick Josh level check and we will see start okay Josh level check yes all right everybody are we ready good evening good evening okay very good awesome 
so we're going to get started all right and as you know today we are going to first get started with the chapter summary of this particular chapter right now of course yes now of course when we talk about heredity as a chapter let's start with a chapter for which you have already learned about right yes yes i will explain in detail but now i need you all to pay attention in class okay now full focus mode all of you should be in yes so now here we have a family tree right now when you talk about a family tree we know that there is a father there will be a mother right then of course we see that they have a children so let's call these two let's call him has maybe you know let's call him as bishal and let's call her as sunali right so we've named the children as well now of course in this particular family tree what do we observe we see that there is a mother and father and of course as a part of sexual reproduction they have produced offsprings right now we see that these offsprings that are there now this is a quick revision of the previous chapter are they identical or are they similar to their parent are they identical or similar yes quickly in the chat yes exactly so can you tell me are they identical or are they similar yes they are similar to their parents they are not identical right that means that they have certain characteristics okay so we see that there are certain characteristics from the father and there are certain characteristics which they have obtained from the mother but we also observe certain differences also right so we also observe certain differences now how exactly now i need you to tell me the answer right how exactly are characteristics coming from father to offsprings or from parent to offspring how exactly is it coming can you tell me yes can you tell me how exactly is it that characteristics are coming from parent to offspring this is a revision of your previous chapter in your previous chapter you have learned about this this is nothing new i am teaching you exactly it is coming from dna copying right so from how do organisms reproduce we have understood that characteristics can be passed on from parent to offspring now these characteristics that i am telling you that are going from parent to offspring is happening by the process of dna copying that means that there is some transmission of information and this right here right wherein we observe that there is transmission of characters right transmission of characters from parent to offspring is what we call as heredity write this definition down super duper important so now we have understood what is heredity now i told you that from parent right so from parent to offspring okay so now offspring i told you that they are similar now someone was asking me ma'am what is the difference between identical and similar it's as good as if you take my notebook and you take xerox copy of it it is same to same it's a xerox photocopy right so this is what we understand as identical but if you take my notebook you write some notes right you are of course taking the information from here to here but it's not the same probably you would have written it slightly different from the way i wrote it or maybe you would have drawn a different kind of box so in this case we see that it is similar right so that is what we mean by it and yes for all your doubts i'm going to clarify i just need you to stay focused all your doubts will be answered today okay so now of course this is what we mean by similar now here in this case when it is similar right it means that there are certain slight differences right do you all agree with me ma'am so when an offspring is produced in sexual reproduction there are some slight differences how many of you agree with this right do we observe slight differences yes or no in the chat we observe slight differences yes you agree with me now same organism okay same organism same species yet slight differences are observed okay through sexual reproduction now slight differences write this definition also slight differences that occur between organisms of the same species 
is what we call as variation, right? So variation is also something that we have learnt about already, no? In how do organisms, we know that slight differences that exist between organisms of the same species is what we call as variation, right? So this is now something we have understood about heredity and variation. And we know that sexual reproduction or, you know, contributes to both of this. Yes, yeah, so all of you, if you want to take a quick screenshot of this, go ahead and take a quick screenshot, right? And two questions that I will answer, menti quiz will happen only towards the end of this chapter uh, session. So please do not, right? Please do not spam on the chat about menti quiz. Second thing, ma'am, please teach, uh, teach in Hindi. So I'm not really comfortable in Hindi. I'm still learning Hindi, right? Haan, ma'am ko Hindi nahi aati, but thoda thoda Hindi aati hai. But to teach, I'm more fluent in English. So go ahead and you know, uh, whatever you're not able to understand, let me know, I'll teach that part in Hindi, okay? All right, okay, yes, screenshot is an identical thing, exactly, okay. So shall we go on, shall we move ahead? Are we clear with this? Ma'am, variation part, I will see. What are variations? Variations are slight differences that you observe between offsprings of the same species. So between your parents and you, you observe some differences, right? So those differences that are there are nothing but variations. And what are offsprings? Offsprings are nothing but babies or the young ones that are there, right? So that is what we mean by it. For those of you who are new to the class and who are just joining in, welcome to the class. Quickly hit the like and subscribe button. Trust me, this class is going to be helpful for all of you, okay? So now we have understood about heredity and variation and now we know that this DNA copying is taking place, right? But I told you in heredity, there is transmission of characters, right? So now we have introduced the word characters, yes? And there is also something called as traits that you would have read about. So how many of you get confused with these two words? Ma'am, what is character and what is trait? How many of you are confused with this part? Ma'am, characteristics... Traits. What, is the, what is it? Are they the same? Are they the different? Where do I use the word trait? Where do I use the word character? When I'm writing my answer, most often than not, we get confused, right? And yes, for those of you who don't get confused, amazing. For those of you who do get confused, don't worry, I'm going to help you out with it, right? So now, of course, when we talk about characters, right? I told you heredity is nothing but transmission of characters from parent to offspring. So what is a character? It is something that can be transmitted from the parent to offspring, right? So you can say character is any inheritable feature. That means anything which can go from parent, right? Any characteristic which can be transmitted from parent to offspring. Somebody was asking me, ma'am, define offsprings. Offsprings are nothing but young ones, babies, right? Syed, I hope now we are clear, okay? Offsprings are nothing but babies. And uh, gene and DNA, I will do the difference when I talk about genes. So please don't worry. I will talk about all of it, all right? So now we know that any inheritable feature is, of course, what we call as a character. But now we see that characters, you can give me an example, right? So when you talk about characters, if you see hair color, hair type, right? Eye color. These are all maybe skin color. They are all examples of, you know, characters that are there. So what are characters? They are nothing but any inheritable feature which can go from parent to offspring. All right. So I hope we are clear with characters. But now when I talk about traits, right, let's go from here. Now, when you talk about hair color or hair type or eye color, is there any only one type? right? Is there only one type of eye color? Only everybody has black eyes, right? Or everybody has black hair. Is that the case? Yes, is that the case? When we talk about hair color or hair type, yes or no? In the chat, I want to see the answer. No, right? It's not like everybody will have black hair, everybody will have black eyes, everybody will have, you know, um, the same kind of skin. No, as a matter of fact, not. But in this also hair color, you have so many options. Some have black hair, some have blonde hair, some have red hair naturally, right? Eye color also, you have black eyes, brown eyes, you have, you know, bluish green eyes, yes? Then you talk about hair type also, you have straight hair, curly hair, wavy hair, so many types of it that are there. So these are all not the same, but they are alternative forms, right? So we see that these alternative forms, right? So, alternative forms of a character 
is what we call as a trait. So in hair color, if I say black hair, brown hair, right? So these here are traits, right? But if I tell hair color, then it is a character. So yes, so in the case of ear lobe also, ear lobe is a character. But is it free or is it attached? That is a trait. So are we clear? Yes, are we clear with the difference between character and trait? See, go step by step. Don't jump into dihybrid cross. Learn your fundamentals here. If you learn this part, all that is so easy. You will be like, ma'am, I don't know why I was struggling for that, right? So learn your fundamentals and I need you to understand this properly. Yes? Now, for those of you who are asking me about variations, variations are nothing but slight differences that exist between parent to offspring. And why are variations important, right? Why are variations important and necessary? Because at the end of the day, variations improve a person's, um, they improve the chances for survival, right? So, most variations can be helpful, but not all variations are helpful. Yes? And of course, at a larger front, variations contribute towards evolution as well, right? So yes, very good Diksha, very good. Now to summarize this once again, right? So I will summarize this once again. What are characters? Characters that are there are any inheritable feature, right? Any inheritable feature between parent to offspring is what we call as a character. So we see that characteristics are things like hair color, hair type and eye color, yes? Now at the same type, when we talk about Traits, right? Traits are the alternative forms. So if I say hair color is a character, hair color can be black, hair color can be blue, I mean, can be, you know, brown, it can be blonde. So in this case, we can talk about brown, I mean, these things that we talk about are the traits, right? So someone was asking me, ma'am, difference between hair color and black color. Hair color is a character, that means it is something that can be passed on from parent to offspring. A black color is actually the trait of that particular individual, right? So that is the main difference. Now, some more examples that you would want about is, again, you can talk about skin color, right? You can talk about, you know, maybe uh, ear lobes. They are all characteristics that are there. Now, in variation, if any other point, I think any other point which comes as three marker for variation, right? So mainly when you talk about variation, the three points you need to write about is one, variations are slight differences, normally increases survival, brings in new characteristics, accumulation of variation for a long period of time can result in evolution as well, right? Contributes to evolution. So that is what we mean by it, okay? So, so much are we clear? So, traits are basically subparts. No, don't say subparts. They are alternative forms, right? Alternative forms of character, which can even be changed, ma'am. Uh, Makil, can you be a little more uh, clear about the question? It's a little vague, right? So, are we clear so far? Are we clear? What is RNA Gurjot? I will tell you. Ma'am, can we write this definition in the exam? Yeah, you can, but you'll have to be specific about it, okay? Ma'am, see, twins way, you are looking at See, the way you are looking at it is that in on a broader front, they look identical. But there are many micro level things which might not be the same, right? Even in twins, when you talk about it, there will be some slight differences that may exist, e exist right? All right. Is speciation, nothing related to evolution is there, okay? Nothing related to evolution is there for your exam. So don't worry about speciation and all that. Yes, yes. Okay, don't worry about dihybrid cross. You pay attention here. Then I will get to all of it. All right, start with basics. I need you to focus now. Uh, all right, so now we have had a look at some of the important terminologies that are there. We've looked at heredity, we've looked at characters, traits, and we've looked at variation. Now comes, yes, ma'am, gene, allele, what is DNA, what is RNA? Very confusing. So let's understand. Now I told you that characters that are there are any inheritable feature, right? Someone was asking me, ma'am, what is inheritance? Inheritance is the same as heredity, transmission of characters. Very simple, okay? So now what did I tell you? I told you that characters are any inheritable feature, right? So they are any inheritable feature. Now I also told you in the beginning that when we talk about Transmission of these characters. Talk, think about heredity only. How are characters going from parent to offspring? Tell me once again. How are characters going from parent to offspring? It is going through DNA copying, right? So it is going through DNA copying that is there. Now, it brings us to our next question. What is this DNA? Okay? You all tell me what is DNA. 
you all have been learning about this from your ninth standard as a matter of fact eighth standard so you should all be able to give me the answer to this what is dna in the chat yes meaning of inheritance tarun bachcha it's the same transmission of characters from parent to offspring right dna deoxyribonucleic acid very good dna in the cell okay everybody is giving me full form of dna wonderful it is genetic material where is that answer dna is the genetic material very good it is the it is not the basic unit of life but it has all the information that is necessary right so dna has all the information it is the blueprint that has all the necessary information so whatever hair color eye color hair type whatever i told you it's all there in your dna right now where in the dna is our question right so what is dna DNA is nothing but your deoxyribonucleic acid, right? So this is what we understand as DNA. Now, where exactly in the DNA do we find this? Now we see that there are certain sequences. All right, write this down. We see that there are certain sequences, or I can say there are certain segments of DNA that code. for a particular character right so they code for a particular character now this is what we understand as a gene now for those of you who are asking me ma'am difference between gene and dna are we clear what is dna dna is the entire genetic material that is there but at the same time what is a gene gene that is there is mainly it is a segment right we see that it's a part of the dna maybe parts also not just a single part it could be multiple parts also multiple parts of dna that will code for a particular characteristic so how do we define uh, genetic material i mean gene you would define it in this manner what is genome genome is the entire sequence of dna right so if we talk about human genome it is the entire sequence of the genetic material that is what we mean by it inheritance and heredity ego flash like i told you it is nothing but inheritance is what you get from parent to offspring which is also heredity more or less the same right so are we clear with this are we clear ma'am please repeat definitely so what do we understand we know that characters are nothing but they are these features which can go from parent to offspring right and we know that if it is going from parent to offspring dna copying is taking place but during this dna copying what exactly is happening is that in the dna there are parts right we see that there are parts of the dna or segments of the dna that code for a particular character so that segment which is telling me that okay this particular segment of the dna will tell okay this is what the hair color should be right or let's say this particular part say this is what the eye color should be right so i'm giving you a hypothetical example so different parts of the dna or different sequences or segments will hold information what is coding coding in this case or codes for it is nothing but it has the information for that particular character right so that is what we mean by it so yes very good DNA is the whole train, gene is the ha, huh, yeah, kind of like that, and each dabba of it is having like some information. Gene, DNA, chromosomes, yes, exactly. Okay, it's not programming. Don't worry. See if you give me questions like this in the exam, it will be very tough. Okay, so we will get take it step by step. You have understood this. Are we clear with what is gene? Define DNA. DNA is genetic material of in our body, which has you know all of it. it is the heredity material yes and as a matter of fact we say that gene is also the heredity unit right so we say that it is the heredity unit so when i say heredity is transmission of characters this is what we mean by it ha ha we will do numericals also don't worry bachcha you focus on learning the fundamentals only then numericals you will be able to do take a screenshot ma'am rna is similar to dna no okay structurally rna and dna is different right so when you talk about rna we see that rna that is there is ribonucleic acid all right for those of you who want to take screenshot you can take screenshot all right so now you know that this is ribonucleic acid now rna more or less has a main role to play with proteins in our body right uh, production of proteins and protein synthesis yes so that is what we mean by it all right 
No, no, I have not started Mendel's law. I'm going very slow with this part so that you understand Mendel's law. I'm being very slow today, okay? So this is all about it, all right? So now we have just finished our understanding what is a gene, okay? Now, of course, on moving on, we know that there is also something known as allele. Now, this is where we get confused, all right? So when you talk about gene, okay? Now, I'm going to make it a little, we're going to make it a little more complex, all right? So... Slowly, step by step, we will take it in a complex manner. Now, we know that DNA is the genetic material, right? And we know segments of DNA have gene in them. But the thing is, DNA is very long. So, we know that the DNA gets condensed and it forms a chromosome, right? So, they get condensed and they form chromosome, all right? Now, of course, we know that when that happens, when it becomes condensed, we see that there is a part of the chromosome, okay? There will be a certain location, so now what has happened? You think about it, okay? Now imagine I have this white tissue paper and maybe this part of the, assuming that this tissue paper here is our G, okay? Let's assume this. I'm going to make it easy. So imagine this part of our tissue paper is where our gene is there. But I can't keep this tissue paper like this. So I need to fold it, fold it, fold it and fold it like this. Now when I do this, I see that there is a particular location wherein I will find this, right? So I will find a particular location where my gene is found. So this is something that happens inside our body, okay? This is something that happens within our body when the DNA that is there, it will coil and it will form this, okay? So now we see that a particular part, we see that there's a particular location in the chromosome, okay? Where the gene is found, all right? Now, I told you a gene will code for hair color, eye color, all of these things. But then again, we know that it could be black hair, brown hair, whatever color it may be, right? So, let's assume this. Now, let's assume that this is a particular chromosome, right? And we know that in our body, chromosome occur as pairs, right? So, we see that chromosomes will occur as pairs because we have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? So, now, of course, we see that we have these chromosomes here with us. Now, in this pair of chromosomes, there will be a certain location. And let's assume that this particular part, okay, or this particular gene is coding for hair color. But now, this is coded by the gene. But we know that there can be alternative forms, right? So we know hair color can either be black hair or it can be brown hair, right? So we see that alternative forms exist. Now who is responsible for these alternative forms to come? That is where the alleles come into the picture. Now slight differences in maybe the sequence or maybe like if we see that these alternative forms, it will be the same gene, okay? But due to some slight differences, we see that they can call for an alternate, right? So in this case, we see that if at this point, right, in the same location, alternative form of the gene occurs, right? Alternative form of the gene occurs, then this is what we call as a allele, right? So alternative form of a gene is what we call as a allele. Now, once again, I am going to explain this. Yes, once again. Now, what are genes? Genes are nothing but they are specific parts on the chromosome, right? I, I'm not able to move till that end, right? So chromosomes are rod-shaped structures. What are chromosomes? They are highly condensed forms that we find inside the genetic material. I mean, uh, they are highly condensed rod-like structures, which is nothing but made up of DNA and proteins, right? Now, because of that, in this case, what do we observe? Because of all that coiling, the genes will have a particular location on the chromosome, right? So they will have a particular location on the chromosome, the gene that is there. And we know that all genes, remember this very simple. What do genes code for? They code for characters, right? And characters are what go from parent to offspring. But we know that characters can have alternative forms or they have traits. So in this case, what are all the traits that are there? Yes, what are all the traits that we find? It could be alternative. And how does that happen? That happens because of alleles. What are alleles? Alleles are the alternative forms of the gene, okay? So in this case, if this is one gene, right? We see that this is one gene which is there. But maybe there is an alternative form. So let's assume that this is hair color gene and this is coding for black hair. 
but we see that there could be another one okay there could be another alternative form of the same gene that is giving you brown so it is the same gene but they are alternative forms right so that is what we mean as alleles so are we clear with this are we clear approximate time is 9:30 are we clear difference between allele and trait trait is nothing but it is a alternative form of a character what is allele allele is the alternative form of gene are we clear with this i am just starting with the basics okay yes whatever doubts are there you can go ahead and send it to me but so far are we good to go give me a quick thumbs up i will explain acquire traits all of it don't worry whatever is there i will definitely go and explain it but i want you to tell me if you understood this yes very good very good okay amazing most of you are saying ma'am move on i've understood what is chromatin see chromatin is basically D dna along with proteins will form thread like structures called chromatin chromatin will further undergo coiling to form chromosome okay gene means gene means they are segments of dna okay now moving on all right so now we know that genes and alleles exist right now of course we know at the end of the day most traits like hair color eye color all of them are going from parent to offspring right so in this case we see that traits which are present in the person since the time of his birth and are passed from one generation to the other two conditions are there right so first and foremost it must come from parent to offspring right that is condition number 1 and secondly it should be present from birth so you think about small things like two eyes one nose and all those things we know that these that are there we see that it's coming from parent to offspring right and it is there right from birth so these are what we call as inherited traits right so whatever you get from birth and is coming from parent to offspring are your inherited traits but let's say that maybe you know there is a person for example let me give you an example of my own brother right so now if you think about it in my family we all have very big noses right our noses are pretty big but what happened was when my brother played basketball he had an injury and as a result his nose is slightly bent okay so his nose is not straight like this but rather it's slightly bent to one side and now that is how his feature is because of course over time that's how his face has become or at the same time if you think about it there's another friend of mine who have very you know maybe probably they um, when you talk about body type we see that uh, compared to his parents he looks slightly different in terms of body size in terms of body weight now these are not things which come from birth but rather these are things that happen over time right or which are acquired over time yes so maybe face off all those things are not coming from parent to offspring but it's acquired over time so this is what we mean as acquired traits right yes like making body in the gym very good ayushi very good they are all acquired traits yes so now when you talk about this what are inherited traits these are present from parent to offspring right from birth and is passed on from generation after generation but acquired traits are those which are you know acquired over time like maybe a scarred uh, you know chin or maybe you know change in body type so this is what we mean by it ma'am what about regrown teeth see if your milk teeth fall out and your regrown teeth are there those are traits which th those are normal that happens to everybody right so that is what we mean by that could be a inherited one Swimming is an acquired trait. Yes, nose piercings. Yes, very good. For those of you who have some other exam tomorrow, please go prepare for your exam. Watch the session much later. Okay? RNA are found in ribosomes. Yes, they are present. All right, very good. Very good. Yes. What all are the topics you finished? These are all the topics I have finished. Now, everybody, quickly take a screenshot and let me know. Right? Quickly take a screenshot of this. and give me a quick thumbs up ma'am is there any dna change in acquired traits no we will not observe drastic see it again depends on what trait we are talking about right but most often than not no what are gametes gametes are nothing but the sex cells that are there right so are we clear with this are we clear okay 
Ma'am, how does creation of promote survival? Because see, the variations or differences occur not only due to random mixing or due at the genetic level, but also due to environment. And not always does it benefit that, right? It's not always that it benefits a survival. But most often than not, sometimes it does favor survival. What are pair of alleles called as? The pair of alleles, we, we see, we say that pair of alleles could be like, normally what we say is that it, the pair of alleles that are there are present in the homozygous, or I mean, they're present in the homologous chromosomes that are there. Are, um, alt, are they passed on from parent to offspring? Are acquired traits passed on from parent to offspring? No, they are not, right? Yes. Hindi mein allele, ek aur baar mein quickly samjhati hu, alleles jo hote hai, jo wo genes ke alternative forms hote hai, ya fir genes ke dousre forms, wo vahi position mein, jahaan pe wo gene present hai, vahi position pe vahi present hai, but lekin wo kya karte hai, ki wo alternative forms ko code karte hai, bas, utna hi, right? So now moving on to some more important terminologies before we go into understanding about uh, the Bendel's laws that are there, right? Those are what we need to understand. So now let's go on to learning more about it, okay? Yes. Now let's have a look at this. Now here we have a father, we have a mother, okay? And what do we see here? We see that there are chromosomes. Now I want you to tell me this particular part that I have highlighted. Am I highlighting a gene or am I highlighting the allele? Is this gene or allele that I am highlighting? We are highlighting a particular position on the chromosome, right? Which is coding for a particular character. I am not telling if it is alternate or if it is same, nothing. I am just telling you that there is a particular segment of DNA that is coding for a particular character. If that is the case, what will it be? It will be a gene. Very good. Yes. So we see that there is a certain location on the chromosome which is coding for a character. And let's say that we see that, see, in both the mother and the father, if you see, in the same location of the chromosome, we see that the character is being coded, right? So, in this case, what do you observe? We see that this right here is the eye color, right? So, this is eye color. And this position, so eye color is being coded here. Now, in the father, what do we observe? We see that father is having an alternative form where he is showing black eye color right while the mother here is having an, another form which is blue eye color so now these are the alternative forms right so individually if i talk about it black eye color blue, brown eye blue eye color they are all being coded yes black and blue is the alleles very good they are the alleles right so now if you want to go a little more in detail we see that this we see that we represent maybe black eye saying capital B and capital B. And we say blue is represented by small b. Okay, easy for understanding. Now here we see that there are the set of genes which are present in the organism. Right, so we see that there are a set of genes which are present in the organism. Now in this case, this particular set of genes is what we call as genotype. So this is the definition of genotype, everybody. Please write this down. This is the definition of genotype. While on the other hand, we see that when this gene is getting expressed, right? So when the gene is, you know, doing its function, it is getting expressed. What do you see? How are we seeing these genes? Are we seeing the genes physically inside the cells? No, right? But rather, what are we seeing? We are able to observe it outside. It's observable, right? So the observable characteristics, whether it's tallness, shortness, eye color, hair color, how are we able to do that? That is because of the phenotype, right? So what is phenotype? They are nothing but the observable characteristics which are genetically controlled, okay? These, this is what we mean by it, uh, this is what we mean by genotype and phenotype, right? So what is genotype? Genotype are the set of genes which are present in the organism, right? But at the same time, how are we able to see these genes? Because when they express themselves, we observe certain characteristics. Yes, observable characteristics, visible characteristics, very good. These are all ways in which we will be able to identify it. 
Ma'am, will each pair of chromosomes, that is a very good question, let me have a look. Will each pair of chromosomes have different traits or same character? Very interesting question which brings me to our next point, right? So see, they can have same or they can have different, right? Now in this case, do they have a similar, Do they? is it similar or is it different? Both of it, we, I'm saying that in both chromosomes, the both homologous chromosomes that are there, both are showing capital B and capital B. So is this a similar pair or is it a dissimilar pair, right? Yes, it is a similar pair, right? So this is similar, that means they are the same. Now, if parent and from both parents, mother and father, they end up getting two genes that are similar, okay? One from mother has come, one from father has come in such a way that they are both similar. So in this case, we call it as homozygous alleles, right? So this is what we mean by homozygous allele. While mother here is, here it is capital B, capital B, here we are saying it is small b, small b. Now when this father and mother come together and they reproduce and they get a, they make an offspring. We see that one of this chromosome will come to the uh, offspring and one of this chromosome will come here. Now in this case, what do you see? We see that in this case, they are dissimilar, okay? They are not the same. They are dissimilar. And when a dissimilar pair of alleles exist, we see that heterozygous alleles are present, right? So this is what we mean by it. So what are alleles? Alleles are alternative forms of the gene. They can exist as a similar pair and we call it as homozygous, right? And while on the other hand, if they are dissimilar pair, we call it as heterozygous. Now Ayushi has asked me a very good question on ma'am, what is homozygous and homologous? See, homozygous is with respect to the alleles, right? When alleles are similar and is a similar pair of it, we mean it as homozy homozygous. Homologous is with respect to chromosomes, right? And we see that homologous chromosomes are these pair of chromosomes which are similar in shape and size in such a way that one will come from mother and one will come from father. So this is what we mean by it. So ma'am, can we say that genotype is the organism's full uh, heredity information? No, because that is what we will say as genome. That is another word that we will use for it. But when you talk about genotype, it is with respect to a set of genes. Not all genes, but set of genes that code for a character. Ma'am, is genotype more important than phenotype? Nothing like that. Both genotype and phenotype are necessary. So are we clear with this? See, these are your basics. Rest of it will come like this because terms like genotype, phenotype, allele, gene, I'll keep using this over and over repetitively, right? So I need you to have an understanding of this so that the rest of the chapter and the rest of the class becomes easy for all of us. Yes? What is homozygous? I will explain once again, bacha. Homozygous that is there is a group of similar pairs that are there, right? Group of similar pairs. So I will write this down. So if there are a similar pair of alleles that means they are same same that is what we mean as homozygous but if they are a dissimilar pair of it we call it as heterozygous right so this is what we mean by it now this is not given to you directly in the textbook but this is given to you indirectly i am spending time here so that i can help you understand this right so that is what i'm trying to, you know, I'm not going ditto per text, but I'm helping you build your basics for your future, right? Now moving on to next two terminologies. That means we have dominant and recessive allele. Now dominant and recessive again is something we are going to revisit, right? We are going to be revisiting it much later on when we talk about crosses. Yes, but dominant alleles are those which will, which will always express itself in both homozygous and heterozygous condition, right? So this is what we mean as dominant allele. But when you talk about recessive alleles, we see that recessive alleles are those which will express themselves only in homozygous condition. So you can always think about dominant as, you know, a super ruling, and recessive as submissive, right? That means it will not really go out there. So this is what we mean by it. 
So now this is what we understand as dominant allele and recessive allele. So can we say dominant trait? Yes, you can say dominant trait also, Aditi. Not a problem. Dhyan was looking very worried about learning so much extra stuff. But of course, now that we know, right, it's going to be very simple. Okay. Example of genotype. See, black eye color. Okay. Black eye color. The fact that it's black eye color is your phenotype. But what is the genetic or if I say, let me just write this down. The fact that the eye color is black is what is phenotype. Yes, but at the same time, when we say that this is how the genes are present, this is the genotype, right? So we know that black could be this and this or it could be this and this. So what kind of genes are they having? Is it with a homozygous allele? Is it with heterozygous allele that is there? This is what we understand as genotype. So are we clear? Yes, are we clear with this? Are we good to go? Ma'am, what all could be the possible genotypes? Uh, there could be many, it depends on the character, right? Ma'am, can we say genotype is genetic information of the trait? You can say that. Yes, you can say that. Nucleus. Nucleus is nothing but the control center in the cell. Okay, that is what we mean by nucleus. Yes? Very good. Very good. Yes. Yeah, see, definitions I've already given. You can quickly go rewind back and we can have a look at it. Right? What are recessive traits? Recessive traits are nothing but those traits which will only express itself when, right? So when it is in homozygous condition. But when it is there with another, in, in when it's in heterozygous condition along with the dominant trait, it cannot be expressed. Right? So that is what we mean by it. Ma'am, is all genes allele? All alleles are genes. We can say that, right? All alleles, basically, they're alternative forms of the gene. We can say that, right? Ma'am, explain dominant. Ha, huh, yeah, strong kid. Yeah, I mean, it's a very sad way of comparison, but yes, we can do that, right? Difference between gene and allele. One more time, I am going to do this. Last time, okay, after that, I will not take this doubt. Gene, what is it? It is a segment of DNA that codes for a particular character, right? But on the other hand, when we talk about alleles, they are alternative forms of the gene. So these are alternative forms. If a gene has an alternative form, it is a allele, right? Yes, okay. Homologous, heterologous chromosomes is not important. You don't need to know. It's out of your syllabus. I just explained extra for you, okay? All right. Okay. So now we will move on. Are we clear with the basics? Are we all clear? Yes. I will be doing that question. Frozen creation. We will be doing that question. Don't worry. Ma'am, what, what do we mean by alternative gene? Alternative forms of it, right? That means that they are found in the same position of the chromosome. But maybe one, is, one, one, one gene is coding for uh, black. One is coding for blue. So they are alternative forms of the same, same gene, which is eye color, right? At the end of the day, no matter what color it is, it is at the end of the day eye color, right? So that is what we mean by it. Okay. Evolution is cancelled. Now I hope all of you are clear with this. Now everybody, we will do environment also. Don't worry. Let's get started. Okay. Now we will move on to our important part of it, which is on uh, Mendelian laws, right? And understanding what Mendel did into understanding all of this. Now, today, if I'm telling you gene, allele, I'm telling you homozygous, heterozygous, I'm able to give you a lot of these things, right? So why am I able to tell you all of this? It is because of the starting works, right? So Mendel started this. And of course, over time, so many scientists have contributed. And over time, of course, we have been able to have an in-depth understanding of how genetics works, right? So what is genetics? It is nothing but study of genes and how they function and what they do. That is what we mean by it. So now we know that one of the prominent scientists who had a very important role to play is Gregor John Mendel. Now we know that he was actually not technically a biologist per se, but he was educated in a monastery. Then of course he went on to studying a lot of mathematics in different universities. But he was very curious to understand what is what, right? Which is why we saw that he went back to his monastery and he had a lot of questions that he had, yes? And he went ahead and he carried out some experiments on a pea plant. And then he went on to understanding and devising how these, you know, 
how gen uh, genetic information is passed on from one parent to the offspring how exactly does it right so based on all of this right we see that he devised he made up the monohybrid cross based on which he devised two laws and then we had the dihybrid cross as well but here a very important question which will come in your exams and most likely to come is why did Mendel choose pea plant, right? So we know that pea plant that is there is often known as Pisum sativum, right? So why did he choose pea plant? And how many of you, tell me in the uh, chat itself, how many of you got this question in your pre-boards or in your midterms asking you for explain why Mendel chose pea plant, yes? How many of you have got this question? I'm sure there will be a good number of you who have got this question. It is a easy three mark question that will come in your exams, right? Very good, exactly. So you need to pay attention when I'm gonna explain this part to you, right? So why has Mendel chosen pea plant? Now, first and foremost, very good, uh, Aisha, very good. Pea plant has a very short lifespan, right? So when you talk about it, when you're doing any experiment, you cannot be using plants which will take 10 years to grow. For you to get one result only, it will take 10 years means how? Like some, you, you'll need like generations of people to carry out your experiment. But the first and foremost was pea plant used to grow very fast, right? So short lifespan was very beneficial for carrying out experiments. Now, second, of course, we saw that it was a bisexual flower. That means it had both male and female reproductive parts on the same plant, right? And of course, here he saw that he could do self-pollination. That means he could breed the same kind of plants. And as a result, he would give, give rise to pure breeds, okay? What do we mean by pure breeds? These are breeds where he will get characters in homozygous condition, right? So he would be able to get them in homozygous condition. While on the other hand, he was also able to cross-pollinate so that he could get cross-breeds. Now, what are cross-breeds? Where there is mixing of characters taking place, wherein you can get in heterozygous condition also. And along with this, it was easy to understand all of this because they had contrasting characters, right? So, they were having contrasting characters where if you look at height, dominant was very tall. But your recessive means it was dwarf, very short, right? And along with that, there was seed shape, seed color, flower color, all of which had contrasting extreme differences, which made it observable as well, right? So it is not that you had to do some DNA analysis and all. You could even observe the physical differences that existed, right? So that is what we mean by it. So these are three reasons as to why he chose the pea plant. But now, of course, as we move on, right? So we know that he performed certain experiments. Now, how did he perform these experiments? So first and foremost, what he did was he took a particular character, right? So he decided that, okay, I'm going to take two plants and I will look at only one character, okay? One character. And when only one character was considered, he called this as a monohybrid cross, okay? Mono means one Hybrid means two, you know, a hybrid is a combination of two, right? So in this case, we call it as a monohybrid cross. Now, in this case, when only one character was considered, he could, you could take any, okay? You could take flower color, you could take, you know, seed shape. But in this take, we will take the height, right? And what did he do? He took a pure tall plant and a pure dwarf, dwarf plant, right? So the phenotype of this particular plant, one is very tall, and one is very dwarf or it is small. So these are our parents, okay? Now, what is the genotype if it is pure? Can you tell me if it if a genotype is pure for a tall plant? Even though you see the answer on screen, I want you to give me the answer, right? What is pure tall and pure short? In the chat, I want you to tell me. We now know what is genotype. Yes, we know what is genotype. So you should tell me what is it. Genotype is what I am looking for. Shreya, monohybrid is one character, dihybrid is two characters and I will be doing the questions today. I am going to do questions tomorrow also along with Ankita ma'am. So don't worry, My our aim is that you become masters in this chapter. Yes, very good, very good, exactly, all tall. So we see that the genotype that is here is capital T, capital T and here for dwarf it will be small t and small t. So always remember this, make a, you know, a star mark whenever in your question if they say pure tall plant, okay, write the genotype for a pure tall plant, 
ऑलवेज राइट इन होमोजाइगस कंडीशन ऑल राइट ऑलवेज राइट इन होमोजाइगस कंडीशन दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू नो ऑन एन एग्जाम फ्रंट यस so now we see that the genotype is there now when we talk about gametes we know that gametes will always end up having half the number of chromosomes right so if all the cells in our case will have 46 chromosomes we know that the sex cells or the gametes this is a, just a continuation of the previous chapter or the gametes that would there would have only half the number of chromosomes that means that if in this one pair you have t and you have t in your gametes you will have only one you will have only one t right so that is why for gametes we will write only one okay so in this case if you talk about this okay you take t t like this we see that in the first generation okay from parent generation first generation of offspring we see that we get something like this now what condition is this can you tell me what condition is this very quickly Ma'am, if genetic makeup of dominant character, okay, wait, I missed that. Of dominant character is not mentioned. Can we just take homozygous? No, you cannot, Bharat. You cannot. If they have not given you, or if they have not been specific about it, you cannot assume it is homozygous. Okay? Exactly. It is heterozygous, right? So it is dissimilar. Now you had parent which was similar. Then you had another parent which was similar. since gametes will have only half one some gametes will have this 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 then on crossing right so every time when you are crossing make a table which we call as the punnett square right so you write all of this in this fashion and you see that all your offsprings okay all your offsprings are dissimilar okay they are dissimilar and surprisingly what do we observe the phenotype right so this is the genotype of it so this is the genotype all this that we saw but the phenotype that we observe is that all of them are tall you had one parent which was dwarf and tiny but at the same time what you saw the offspring in f1 generation first generation of uh, offspring we see that all of them are tall so this gave mendel the idea of the first law of mendel which is law of dominance which we have already explained right so what is law of dominance in heterozygous condition there is one character which will express itself physically which we call as the dominant allele and the other which will remain unexpressed as recessive right so this is what we mean by it and yes tanish very good example to remember this right so that is a very easy way of remembering this So now, when we do the Punnett square, we understand that all of them are tall. Now, what did Mendel do? He said, "Okay, I took pure tall plant and I took pure dwarf plant. I combined these two together. It gave me all the tall plants." So he said, like, "Why not take all these plants which are in my F1 generation?" Okay. So I'm taking all my plants in my F1 generation and I'm going to cross it. Okay. So now you have. two parents now your f1 generation has become parent right so what has happened you have two tall plants which are heterozygous that means capital t small t capital t small t now he will self pollinate it yes very good band stick there is self pollination so now what did he do he took the gametes so this is what you get and he did the punnett square for this as well now what did he observe in this case so we see that these are the gametes right and on this case when these two come together you get one tall right then you see that you get two which are heterozygous and you get one which is dwarf so now you have parent you have f1 and you have f2 now in parent what did we see there was one tall and one dwarf but in the generation after that all were tall but now in the third generation you have the character which was not there in the previous generation which has arisen earlier right so you see that a new character has come out of nowhere so in this case what do you observe we see that there has been some segregation of characters right so we see that the alleles that were there yes so the alleles that were there or the, the alleles that were coding for that particular character has segregated it segregated during the formation of gametes and then of course during fusion some segregation happened but now of course we see that 
but it has come back and as a result segregation has taken place right so this is what we understand as law of segregation and one thing to understand here is that both the parents right both parents contribute equally okay it's not like father will give more genetic material mother will get less genetic material but here we see that both parents will contribute equally right and that's how at the end of the day we see that they're getting one one pair from each so at the end of mono hybrid cross what do we see we see that we get a one tall so we see that we get three tall plants and one dwarf plant right and what we get at the end of f2 is what we call as the mono hybrid ratio or what we say as the mono hybrid phenotype ratio while on the other hand when we talk about the genotypic ratio we see that it is with respect to the genotype which is 1 is to 2 is to 1 okay so now I know that there were a lot of doubts which came in between for which I may have not paid attention to. But very quickly, how many of you are feeling clear about this? I know law of segregation is still a little dicey. But other than that, are we clear with the basics? Yes? Ma'am, if nothing is mentioned, should we take F1 or F2? Take parental generation. Don't start with F1. Are we clear? I'll do law of segregation once again. Okay, don't worry. Law of segregation once again I will definitely teach. Official blueprint, it's not there, but cha, it is not there. Ma'am, to explain this cross, can we say Mendel used other... Yeah, yeah, see, tallness is very easy to understand, right? Tallness is easy to understand, but other character also you can take. Okay, ma'am, not clear this part. Barnali, which part exactly can you tell me? And everybody who is in the live, if you're not replying also, don't worry. Just you tell me once again. Explain once again. Law of independent assortment I will explain with uh, dihybrid cross. But monohybrid are we clear? Yes. Dihybrid you wait. Monohybrid I will explain once again. Alright. Okay. Now I am going to do a little bit of mix of Hindi and English as well. Ma'am is gamete and gene the same? No. Bitan gamete that is there is a reproductive cell or it is a sex cell or a reproductive cell. So your sperm, egg, they are all gametes. But your gene is what is inside the genetic material. Okay, so that is what is different. Yes? Okay. So now of course, let's. I will quickly explain this part once again. Alright? Monohybrid cross, I am going to repeat along with focusing on law of segregation. Okay? So now... In monohybrid cross, we know that there is only one parent, right? Yes, gene is inside the gamete. Exactly. Gene is inside the gamete. Okay? So now let's move on. Now, of course, we know that in monohybrid cross, we know that only one character is considered, right? He is not worried about the exact other things. He is only concerned about the one character that is there. Now, in this case, what is there? Oops, I'm going out of the frame. So, I'll just explain this. So, now here, what do we understand? Here, we see that when only one character is there. Let's see. So, the character we are considering is tallness. Okay? I mean, is what character we are considering is height. Now, height can have alternative forms. We know that there can be tall plants and there can be dwarf plants. So, what did Mendel do? He took two parents. Okay, so this is the parental generation. Alright, so this is the parental generation where he is starting his experiment. So in parental generation, he took pure tall plant. So if it is pure tall plant, they will be, their genotype is capital T, capital T. And he took pure dwarf plant, that means small t, small t. Now gametes means they will have only one one of each, right? So they will have only one one of each, which is why in F1 generation, when he got his first set of offsprings, he saw that all of them were heterozygous tall. So now you see gametes have segregated. The characters or the alleles that were there have segregated into different gametes, right? They have gone and they have segregated into different gametes and they have undergone some fusion and we have got this heterozygous condition, okay? So we've seen that all of them have become heterozygous in the monohybrid cross and as a result, what do we observe? All of them are tall. And this suggests that tall, tallness is a dominant trait over dwarfness. Or this is dominant and this is recessive. So that's how he came up with the concept of law of dominance. That there's some dominant allele and there is a recessive allele. Now what did he do? 
he is like, I am more curious. So I will take my F1 plant. Okay. So I'm going to take this plant that I got here. I will take one more of it. Okay. And then what did he do? He crossed it. So these are my gametes, right? So these are my gametes. Now again, my gametes have segregated. Now, if you look at my characters here, my alleles or my characters, I mean, the alleles that are there, they have segregated into different gametes. So that is not like both will go here only or both will go. They have randomly segregated. So this is what we call as law of segregation where the alleles will segregate into different gametes. And based on what will cross, right? Based on what will cross. So imagine this gamete fused with this gamete. Okay, imagine that's what happened during fusion. Then we will get a plant which is homozygous tall. But you imagine if maybe some other gamete that had this crossed with this, then you would get something which is tall like this. Or you had another gamete which had this and it crossed with this. You would get a dwarf plant, right? So here, what is law of segregation? It means that when two alleles are there, in this case, one allele, another allele, right? They will segregate when? They will segregate during gamete formation, right? So that is when they will segregate. They will not segregate in like, you know, other cells. When gametes are formed, that is when they will segregate. And because they segregate is why after parental generation, when you saw tall and dwarf, F1 mate was not there, but in F2 it came back again. So that is what we mean by it. Are we all clear with this? Are we clear? I need everybody to give me a thumbs up in the chat. Chat is moving very slow today, but I need you all to give me a thumbs up. Yes? Are we clear? Yes. My next thing is dihybrid cross, right? Homologous, see, homologous are corresponding pairs, right? Heterozygous is in respect to the genes that are there. Yes? Ma'am, do uh, these experiments show that traits are in the... Wait, let me see this. I missed that question. I missed one question, so you can send it to me once again. All right? Okay, very good, everybody. Very good. Yes. Ma'am, please slow the... I think I moved that part out. But anyway, nonetheless, right? Yes, yes, you can ask me your doubts, bacha. You can ask me. Mendel's experiment show that traits are inherited independently. Yes, that actually goes on to prove independent assortment as well. They're not technically independently inherited per se, but nonetheless, we see that inheritance that is there is something we see that it's 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 multiple factors which contribute towards it, right? I will do dihybrid. Don't worry, I will do dihybrid. Niches, we will talk about it when we do um, environment chapter. Okay, Aditi? And now to wind up, I need you all to make a quick note of the both genotype and phenotypic ratios, right? So have a look at genotypic and phenotypic ratios. So in F2, the monohybrid cross that is there is 1 is to 2 is to 1. The phenotypic ratio that is there is what we call as the F2 generation, which is 3 is to 1, okay? So very simple and easy. Now, of course, one very important thing to understand. Now, I'm telling you that genotype is there. I'm telling you phenotype is there. But how exactly is that there is a gene, okay? Now, I'm, I'm telling you there's a gene that is coding for height, right? Then I'm telling you that this height, we see that there is some gene which is PT, which is somehow making my plant tall. So, how exactly is it doing it tall, right? How exactly is this happening? So now when you talk about genes, right? So how are these traits getting expressed is something that you need to know. So when you talk about it, we see that we have a gene, okay? Now let's assume I'm taking the same example only, all right? Now here I have a gene, okay? And this particular gene that is there is coding for height of the plant. Now here, let me be specific and let me say that this is coding for tallness, all right? Now what will this gene do? This gene or this sequence that is there will basically code for certain proteins, okay? So this gene that is there will have the genetic information. And what will it do? It will not directly go tell the plant, hey, go be tall. It doesn't work that way. In our body also, it doesn't work that way. But instead, communication happens through proteins, right? So these proteins that are there could be either in the form of hormones like growth hormones or it could be in the case of plants by producing oxen more or it could be by maybe producing certain enzymes that will trigger the reaction for growth, right? So when I tell you 
that tallness or gene codes for this character how are they getting expressed how is it that we are able to see it because of production of proteins which will ultimately result in production of hormones or enzymes so technically what is a gene very good aisha it's a code it codes for certain set of proteins that when it is expressed <coughs> <coughs> that when it is expressed will give rise to certain specific characters so are we all clear with this part so now we have covered these three parts and we are left with the last part which is die hybrid cross now before i go ahead can you quickly all of you are you enjoying this class are you all enjoying today's class are you all you know feeling like ma'am heredity has become little more easy See, I'm not telling that in one day heredity is going to become super easy, but with practice heredity will become easy, right? So from when you started till now, are you becoming, are you feeling a little more comfortable with the chapter? That is my aim, right? And the more we keep practicing, the more you will become better, right? Menti is there towards the end. Practice paper solutions are tomorrow, right? Ma'am, how is F1 generation different from F2? F1 is the first filial generation. That means after parent, the first generation of offsprings you get is what we call as the F1. Now, when you consider F1 and you make them parents and then you go to F2, that is what you understand as second filial. So think about it as your grandparents, your parents and you, right? So grandparents are parental, your parents are F1, you are F2. You can think of it that way, right? Yes, all right, very good. So now, of course, what I will do is by 8 o'clock, we will wind up die hybrid cross also. I will give you five minutes break and then we will go on to the next one. All right. And yes, yes. Ma'am, explain how genes get expressed once again. See, like I said, imagine this is your, this right here is the gene okay i mean it's a very sad look i mean it's a very sad looking dna let me draw a better one okay yes now imagine this particular gene that is there so this particular part is a certain segment right so we know that this is a certain segment of dna that codes for a character so now in this case of course what do we observe we see that this is a gene but how exactly and let's say the gene is coding for tallness right this codes for tallness of plant now, how exactly is something sitting inside a cell making a plant grow tall? How exactly is it doing it? So, what do you see? We see that in this case, what will happen is it will have some sequence. Okay, so if I have to make this a little bigger, we see that it will have certain sequences like some A, G, C, T, A, G, something like that. Like you will learn about it later. But this is like a computer code, okay? You think about how, you know, coders will be sitting and typing in numbers and, you know, prompts telling do this, do that. Your genetic material is also kind of like that, right? So what will happen? It will tell, okay, you, this code will then be interpreted in multiple steps that you will learn in your 11th and 12th grade, which I am not getting into. But in multiple steps, it will get interpreted and it will form proteins, right? So proteins will be formed. And once these proteins are formed, these proteins could be either as hormones, right? So these would be code for hormones to be produced like growth hormone or auxin to be produced. Or it could be in the form of enzymes which will trigger certain reactions within the body, right? So in this way, we see that it will go on in this manner. And yes, question solving, I'll do towards the end. For those of you who are saying, ma'am, please solve this question. Ma'am, in perfect pair of chromosome, is it similar? Perfect is not a word we would use. Pure is the word that we would use, right? Ma'am, does one gene contain two alleles? No, but we see that a pair of chromosomes can have two alleles, right? So that is what we mean by it. Yeah, gene is the programmer, character is the output. Very good, very good. Did I find this chapter tough when I... Yes, I did. But I realized that the only way in which you can combat this chapter is by practice and by clearing your basics, right? So what did I do? I made sure that I cleared my basics, which is my, my fundamentals in this particular chapter is very strong. And because I know my fundamentals so well is why when I start teaching, I start teaching you with basics. Because if your basics are clear, the rest of the chapter is very easy. All right. Okay. Now, before I go ahead, do you want to take a break now or shall I finish die hybrid cross and give you a break? It'll be good, right? I'll finish die hybrid cross and then give you a break. Shall I do that?
what are diploid cells diploid cells are those cells which have both the pairs of chromosomes right both the pairs of like when it has one pair from mother and one pair of father we see that we will have uh, that is a diploid one okay finish first yes so for those of you who are asking me doubts i'm going to quickly take it after i finish this we're going to move on to dihybrid cross which is a very scary thing for many students out there ma'am so many tables so much confusion i don't know what to do so yes this is a very confusing part in dihybrid cross but this is going to be very simple okay i'm going to break this down for you but when you are doing this i need you to pay attention so for now i might not be taking some of the doubts just listen to me now what is dihybrid cross di di means two right so we're talking about two characters which are getting considered right so here let's consider let's not take tallness right so let's go into something easy okay so dihybrid cross here we have two characters wherein we have one which is yellow okay we are going to consider two characters one is seed color and we are going to consider seed shape okay so when you are saying two characters are considered for the cross it is these two that we are considering now here seed color could be yellow color or it could be green color now seed shape that is there could be round seed or it could be wrinkled seed as well right so these are the alternative traits that are there now of course if we go on right let's say that we are going to take the parental generation right so now we have taken a parental generation and in the first parental generation when we are considering dihybrid cross we will take only pure breed right so if it's a pure breed what will it be it will be round and yellow now and we are considering two characters so for round you will write i mean for yellow color you will write capital y capital y so that is for one pair and then you will have round which is capital r capital r but on the other hand you have green and wrinkled seed right now green is recessive trait wrinkled is also recessive trait so you have small y small y small r small r now at all times you need to consider this now the thing is the trick comes in gamete formation right gamete formation what happens is that when you had a single character your gametes were coming in this manner because we were only considering see understand that when i say mono hybrid cross it's not that only tallness will come out in the uh, gamete okay that's not the case but what we are doing is we are only considering that one character or we are only considering that one alley right but when i am considering two in a dihybrid cross i cannot do it as this okay if i do it in this manner it is wrong because this is as good as a mono hybrid one but at the same time if i do it like this yes here i am considering two that is what it is dihybrid cross right so for those of you who have just joined the class i have finished two laws of mendel moving on to my third law okay now stay focused so which is why when you are drawing or when you are doing the genetic material you need or when you are writing the gametes you need to write the gametes in this manner so one of your gametes will have capital y capital r another one will have small y small r which is why when you go ahead and in the f1 generation right so in the f1 generation if you cross it you will get capital y small y capital r small r now in both the cases both the characters both the genotypes if you consider homozygous or heterozygous in the chat can you tell me yes jk or khushi aap sab class mein focus kar lijiye don't talk in class yes everybody quickly heterozygous or homozygous you need to pay attention only then will you understand this is heterozygous now both your characters are heterozygous that means your dominant pair is going to express itself which is why this is going to be yellow and this is going to be round right can we make a table for this you can definitely make a table for this that is not a problem how you are going to solve it is up to you entirely right but you can definitely make a table now what did mendel do mendel is like okay time for me to use my f1 and cross them right so now it's time for me to cross my f1 now what all do i have my my f1 is in this form right 
So I have two parents which are like this. Now can you tell me what are all the gametes that I am going to get here? Yes? Can you tell me in the chat what are all the gametes? Yes? Prachi, lucky, aap sab mat, uh, don't talk in class. Otherwise, it will become a problem, right? Chakkar board, exactly. Ma'am, is cross-pollination and cross-fertilization the same? Not exactly. Okay. I need you all to give me the gametes. Okay, one, have, one of you have told me, ma'am, one is this. Okay. Yes. Y and R. What else? I need all the four. I have put four for you as a prompt, right? So what are all the different ones that you need to take as gametes? First, you do it and then I will do it. Bandstick has given me the answer. All of you are slowly giving me the answer. You're thinking, ma'am, is this the one? Is this not the one? I don't know. Someone is telling me, ma'am, bye, bye. Okay. Bye, bye. If you take, then gone. Zero marks for you. Okay. You are taking dihybrid, which means it should be a combination of Y and R in whatever it may be. Exactly. So I'll tell you a simple trick of identifying the gametes. Okay. So one is this combination. So this is Y and R. Then take this and this. You will, I mean, then you take this Y and this R. You will get capital Y, small r. Now next one you will have this. That is small y, capital R. Then you take this and this, which is small y, small r. So thereby you will get four of your gametes. Are we clear? I will do this once again so that you see it in big bold letters. Okay. How will you identify gametes? So first keep one as constant. Okay. So if I am going to take my capital Y, I will have one combination with this R. Right. So I will have Y and R. Then I will have another combination here. Yes. So this will be capital Y and small r. Now similarly on this side I will have small y. Right. So small y capital R. And here it will be small y small r. Are we clear on identifying this? Ma'am if we take r first. See it depends on the order. Okay. Because in your question if they tell you round seeds and yellow color. Then it will change because then it will be R, R, Y, Y. But if your question says yellow seeds, round color, you will have to take it in that order. So in this case, because the question is in such, I have gone ahead and I have taken it in this manner. Right? So you have all your gametes. Now what do you need to do? You need to go ahead and cross them. Right? Now this is the tricky part. I will tell you why. Okay? Because you have so many gametes. Now I am going to do the cross with you. I will not do all, I will only do some and I will show it to you. Okay, because if I do all, I will take forever to finish this session. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now what all are our combinations? We have one like this, we have one like this, right? I hope I am getting this right. And we have one in this manner. Yes? And I will use another color, maybe green color and write the same. Here also. Now again, if you think about it, right? Use a checkerboard. So from now, match it in this manner. So when you write this, you have one which will be of this form, right? So you'll have one Y, you'll have one Y. Then you have your R and R. So you have your homozygous dominant here. Now in this way, when you think about it, you have Y, Y. Then you have R here. But what is the R here? It is a small R. So you have in heterozygous. But nonetheless, it's all still dominant. Now go ahead and finish it in this manner, like how I am showing it to you, right? So when you go ahead, what do you observe? You are going ahead, start with one, match here, right? Or start with one and match it in this form and then fill it up, right? So this is how you need to go about it. Now if I have to slow it down and show it to you, right? If you have one Y, you have Y like this, then you have maybe R in this color, and you will have R in this color, right? So you'll have it, you will probably have to write it as R and R. So in this fashion, you will be able to write it. Now, are we clear on how to make the one or do you want me to fill this up? Do you want me to fill this up or are we all clear on how to go about it? Are we clear? Yes. Are we clear with how to go about doing the dihybrid cross? In dihybrid cross, what do we observe? Two characteristics are there, right? Two characters and they need to be clubbed at all times. And what do we observe? 
we see that a total of 16 possibilities are coming to us, right? Different combinations and 16 possibilities that are there. And in this case, what do we observe? We see that the two characters, so when I was writing the gametes, I said some could be like this, some could be like this, some could be like this, or we could have like this. Now in this case, if you think about it, we see that alleles of two different characters or the traits that are there. It's not like this and this are always together. They are friends. They will only move together. Or this and, you know, maybe in this combination, they will always be together. No. If you consider two characters, we see that they can go in any combination. Okay. So that is what we mean as law of independent assortment. Independent assortment. That means that they will independently assort. Not like tallness and tallness should always be together. Round and yellow always together. No. They need to happen in their own manner. Right. So that's what we mean as law of independent assortment. And based on the dihydrate, assortment is to segregate, right? So when you say you have an assortment of chocolates, that means that you have different kinds of chocolates, right? And if they're independently assorting, means they are independently moving around or segregating, yes? So that is what we mean by it. Now, of course, when you talk about the genetic or the genotype of this, this becomes very complicated, right? While on the other hand, when you talk about the phenotype, we see that nine of them will be tall, I'm sorry, nine of them will be yellow and round, right? Then we see that three of them will be yellow and wrinkled. Three will be green and round and only one will be wrinkled and green, right? So with this, of course, we get our famous dihybrid ratio, which is nine is to three is to three is to one. Yes. So for those of you who want to take a quick screenshot of this, this is a very simple definition of law of independent assortment, but you can go ahead and take the screenshot. Yes, take a screenshot and let me know. Give me a quick thumbs up everybody, give me a quick thumbs up. Okay, ma'am genotypic ratio for dihybrid cross you don't need to do the genotypic ratio because it's very complicated, right? So super complicated. So now this is of course a quick summary on monohybrid cross where we have gone ahead and learned about law of dominance and law of segregation and dihybrid cross where we have learned about law of independent assortment, right? And last but not the least, I'm going to go ahead with the last part of the chapter which is sex determination before we go ahead and we take a, a quick break. So what is sex determination? Now in the case of individuals, like in human beings especially, we know that individuals can either be males or we know that they can be females. And we know that this is again determined by the genetic material that is there, right? So now when we talk about chromosomes, someone was telling me, ma'am, what is chromosome? I'm so confused. I'll tell you. You have your DNA, right? DNA is a long helical structure. Now DNA will undergo some coiling with the help of some proteins. Eventually it will become some thread-like structure which we call as chromatin, right? Now, when this chromatin undergoes further coiling, it will become one rod-like structure, which will look something like this, which we call as chromosomes, right? And it's not like for all the characteristics that are there, we have only one chromosome, okay? We have a total of 46 chromosomes or we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, out of this, if you see, the first 22 that are there, don't mind the alignment in this, so it's a little tricky, but the first 22 that are there, they are more or less similar in structure and function in both males and females, right? So this is what we call as autosomes, right? What are autosomes? They are the first 22 pairs of chromosomes, right? Which are the same in both males and females. But we see that the third pair is what is, or the 23rd pair, okay? So the 23rd pair is what is different. Now the 23rd pair is what we call as sex chromosomes or the allosomes that are there, yes? Now we see that sex chromosomes are what differentiates an individual as a boy or a girl, right? Now in the case of a boy, when you look at it, we see that there will be an XY pair. Now if there's an XY pair, then the individual will be a boy. But if there is an XX pair, then it will be a girl, alright? So this is what we see. So in boys, basically, it is 44 plus XY, while in girls, it is going to be 44 plus XX, right? Very simple and easy. 
Now, during sexual reproduction, what happens? We see that there is formation of gametes. So, we see that in the females, they will produce egg. Males will produce sperm. Now, what will happen is that these reproductive cells or the sex cells will have only half the number of chromosomes, okay? So, we will see that these guys have only 23 chromosomes, not 23 pairs, but they will have 23, which means that in sperms, some sperms will have 22 plus X, while some will have 22 plus Y, because it has become half. While on the other hand, when you talk about egg, all eggs will end up having 22 plus X, because both of them are XX. And when this happens, when process of fusion happens, we see that both male and female will, there is fusion of sperm and egg. And based on which sperm is fusing with the egg, we see that this determines the, uh, the sex of the young one. So if a sperm with X fuses with an egg, we will get a XX, that means we will get a girl. But if a sperm with Y chromosome fuses, then we will get a boy. So we see that there's always a 50% chance that it would either be a girl or a boy, right? And we see that the sex of the young one is actually determined by the sperm and the sex chromosome in the sperm, yes? So Mantesha, I have a question with which I will do the blood grouping understanding, okay? Blood group, I'll explain based on that. All right, so with this, of course, we have quickly summarized our chapter. So like I promised, 8 o'clock, I have summarized it all. So I'm going to give you a five minute break after which we'll start with our 15 subjective questions and the more we practice, we'll be able to wind up soon, right? So here I'm going to give you a five minute break. We are going to be starting at 8, 5 p.m. So up until then, it is a break time. But of course, before I get started with the questions, I will do a quick doubt solving one. Yes? But of course, everybody, I hope all of you have liked the video, right? Very important that you have all liked this video and you hit the subscribe button as well. Ma'am, 10 minutes. Okay, chalo, 10 minutes. We will do it at 8.10. So 10 minutes and we'll get started soon. 8.10, we will resume.
Can we make me small? Yes. Hello everybody, welcome back to Crash Course 2.0 on Heredity and Evolution where so far we have finished off the chapter summary, right? Now of course for those of you who have just joined the class, I hope that all of you are excited. So if you want to watch the chapter summary, you can rewind and watch it because the next thing that we're going to do is to finish off the 15 subjective questions. But as promised, I told you I will do a 5 minute doubt solving part. So here everybody quickly I'm going to do doubt solving before I'm going to get started. So first one is some of you are asking me ma'am definition of alleles right. What are alleles? They are nothing but they are alternative forms of the gene. Yes. So that is another doubt. Next one. Any more doubts that are there ma'am genotype and phenotype. Like I said genotype that is there is basically it is the set of genes that are considered for certain set of characters while on the other hand phenotype that is there are basically the observable features or the visible features. So if you were to look at maybe eye color right and you have black eye color then we see that the genes would either be of this form or this form. So this is the genotype. But the fact that we see it as black eye color is the phenotype, right? Is law of segregation applicable only to dihybrid or monohybrid as well? Law of segregation tells you that characters will segregate in gametes. It's applicable overall, right? But in dihybrid, we also add in a clause of independent assortment because there we are considering two characters, right? Uh, difference between law of segregation and assortment. See, in law of segregation, what are they saying? They're saying that the characters will segregate when gamete formation takes place. Now, what is independent assortment telling you? Independent assortment is telling you that there is no set way in which it will segregate. It can segregate randomly, right? So, that is what we mean by it. Okay, ma'am, can you explain inheritance of two separate traits? That is shape and color of seeds. Now, Chetan, I've already explained that. You can rewind and watch it once again, okay? Because that's a huge explanation for me to do at this point. Inherited traits. See, inherited traits are those. Inherited traits are those which go from parent to offspring, right? And it is there from birth, right? So, when you talk about all this hair color, eye color, it's there right from birth. But on the other hand, when we talk about acquired, acquired is those which goes from parent, I mean, it is acquired during the lifetime. So body shape, like if tomorrow I want to become muscular, all of that is acquired traits, right? Very simple and easy. Monohybrid, dihybrid, monohybrid, single character, dihybrid, double character, right? What is a different, what is filial and progeny? Progeny is nothing but the offspring, okay? But which generation does it belong to? One, two, three, that is what we say as filial generation. How to identify homozygous heterozygous? If it is a similar one, it is homozygous. If it is similar, it is heterozygous, right? Ma'am, can we say that there is one gene having two alleles, right? So you can say that a pair of genes. So here, see, that is what is a little tricky, right? You can't say one gene will have two alleles. But you can say one gene can have alternative alleles, right? Or alternative form of the gene is the allele. Ma'am, which cross are we supposed to make in independent assortment? Dihybrid cross, okay? What is dihybrid? I've already explained. Why is pea plant used for his experiment? I have a question based on that. So with that, I have finished my doubt solving because some of the questions that you are asking me is are things that I'm going to cover in my next part, which is my subjective part on 15 subjective questions, okay? And you can get five mark questions and two mark questions mainly from this chapter. So you must be able to write the answers, okay? So everybody quickly before we get started I hope all of you have hit the like button have we hit at least 250 likes yes Vishnu 230 likes I need everybody to quickly go ahead and like the video right very very important and yes case based questions are also possible we, we have a target of 250 before I go into the next one yes shall we get started are we ready are we excited shall we good to go 246 likes and I'm touching 250 with four more likes on the video and I know we can do it and let's get started. Okay, our environment will be coming over the weekend mostly, right? So let's get started. This is our first question, okay? 
First question is, what is the genotypic ratio obtained? Now have your notebook and pen with you so that you can write this down and solve it as well, right? So what is the genotypic ratio obtained when a tall plant with round seeds is crossed with a dwarf plant with wrinkled seeds? Yes, easily two mark question, okay? They are asking a genotypic ratio. Look at the options, right? Look at the options. You have tall plant, okay? which has round seeds, okay? One is tall and round. This is not an easy question. So that's why I'm telling you to focus. Then you have dwarf plant with wrinkled, okay? So now what do we observe? We see that there is one like this and you have another like this. Now, first and foremost, tell me the gametes, right? Tell me what are all the gametes you will get, okay? What are all the gametes you are going to get in this particular question? All of you are telling me dihybrid cross ratio. But now only I will tell you that for dihybrid cross ratio, your both parents should be in heterozygous condition. Look at the genotypes. Look at the genotypes. For those of you who are telling you, now only the answer is wrong for dihybrid. Okay. So for parent one, you have two combinations, right? You can see you can get one like this or you can get another which is of this combination. Because the other will be like this and the second one. Because your round is homozygous. Round is homozygous in nature. So these are your gametes. Which means I can just consider these two only. They are only the two possible gametes you are going to get. Now in this case what are you going to get? What are your gamete combinations? Both are homozygous. So we know that at the end of the day this is what you are going to get. So when you are crossing... Your cross will not have 4, 4 and 4 combination. It will not be 4 by 4 because it, it is based on your law of independent assortment, right? Ma'am cannot understand. Don't worry, I will explain this once again. Okay, don't worry. You have one parent which is like this, okay? You have another parent which is like this. Now, I told you that based on law of independent assortment, when you go ahead and you take the gamete, how will you do? You can have one combination which is of this sort. Or you can have another combination which is of this sort. Right? Now what is your other possible combination? These two and these two. But they are say, same as these two only. Right? So the combination is capital T capital R and small t capital R. Now look at this one. They are homozygous pure. Right? It is homozygous pure. Which means all of them are in this form. So technically, even if you cross it how many ever number of times, what will you get? You have only three combinations, right? You have one is capital T, capital R, small t, capital R, right? And then you have everything which is small t, small r. Now you do the crossing for this. You will get capital T, small t, capital R, small r. Then you will get small t, small t, capital R, small r, right? That means at the end of it, right, they are asking you what is the genotypic ratio. Whatever, how many ever combinations you do, even if you put all the gametes, okay, you put all gametes here. At the end of the day, what are you going to get? Your genotypic ratio has only two combinations, right? I'm going to write the combination. One is of this sort, another one is of this sort, right? So you will get one set of plants which are tall and round and you will get another one which is dwarf and round, right? So what is your ratio at the end of the day? You are getting one is to one. On the other side, what will you get phenotypic ratio? One is to one, which is why what is the answer? One is to one on both combinations, which is why for each of it, you are going to get two marks. So are we clear with this? Ma'am, do we have to make all gamete possibilities? No, you don't. Because if it is the same thing, now I'll tell you. When you did the F2 generation for, um, what do you say? When you did F2 generation for uh, dihybrid cross, you had four different possibilities. So that you need to write down. But if it's the same thing, you don't technically. Like when you did the F1 generation for dihybrid cross, did you sit and write everything down? No. You only took RY and you took RY like, I mean, you took one combination of this and you took another combination. So it is done. Very simple and easy question. Okay. So if these kind of questions done, come, don't jump into the answer. 
read the question and go ahead okay so with this we're going to move on to the second question which is again a two mark question on do the genetic combination of mothers play a significant role in determining the sex of a newborn yes or no and you need to dis dis you need to dis describe it to me as to why okay all right ma'am definition of trait trait are alternative forms of characters that is what we mean by trait now some of you are asking me ma'am i'm not able to understand genotypic and phenotypic ratio so genotypic ratio now others can give me the answer to this question for the previous question genotypic ratio is basically all the combinations of tr tr these combinations are genotypic but what you get as the phenotype round tall you know uh, wrinkled small or wrinkled dwarf those are phenotype right so that is what is the difference between the two so i hope now it is clear very good everybody very good for giving me the answer right because we know that the mother does not determine the sex of the individual right so the genetic combination of mothers do not play a significant role in determining the sex of a newborn but rather it is the genetic constitution of the father right because we know that in the mother we know that in the gametes or in the of uh, ovum we see that all ovum will have 22 plus x but in the sperm some sperms will have 22 plus x while some will have 22 plus y which is why in this case we see that the correct answer would be written in this format but it will be for 3 marks so how would you start you should start your answer by saying that no the genetic combination of the mother or i would say don't start with no you can say the genetic combination of the mother does not play a significant role in determining the sex of the newborn because we know that mothers or females will have a pair of x chromosomes or they will have 44 plus xx so we know that all the children will inherit the x chromosome from the mother regardless of whichever gamete it is right but on the other hand depending on what sex chromosome is inherited from the father it will determine whether it's a boy or a girl aryan and everybody who is discussing where you are from please pay attention in class bachcha very very important okay so now based on this if you write you will get 3 marks okay one point for saying yes or no one point for justifying two points you will have to write to justify it okay very important now moving on to question number 3 everybody on your screens okay give reasons as to why acquired characters are not inherited three mark question very interesting question okay why are acquired characters not inherited in the chat very quickly yes why are acquired characters right Yes, because they cannot be transferred to parent to offspring. There is no change in DNA. Yes, Tejas, I would have missed your doubt, but child, you can send it to me once again. I think I have missed it, right? Very good. Okay, because they are not in the genes, because they cannot be copied. Very good. I am seeing some good answers, right? So when you talk about acquired characters, we know that acquired characters or acquired traits are those which are acquired during the lifetime. So this could be in response to any external thing. It could be maybe due to food, maybe due to some stimulus, maybe due to some climatic conditions. So we see that it's something that we acquire that have over a lifetime. and we see that it results in the development of a certain trait but in this case we see that it's not transferred or it's not something we get from our parents and we see that this of course it it cannot be inherited which means if i have an acquired trait it will not go to my offspring right and at the same time there is no G dna as well i mean there's no change in the dna so swimming learning of characteristics that are there so for example like i told you right uh, if there's like a scarred chin or if there's you know change in body shape like you become muscular or you know if you become thinner or if you put on some weight all these things that are there is acquired traits right so 3 to 4 marks it will come for 3 to 4 marks so how would you start writing the answer acquired traits are as a result of our body's response to certain changes right it could be climate food whatever it may be right now these results in the development of a particular trait which happens uh, where a change in phenotype is observed or change in an observable feature is observed right but now for them to be inherited they need to it should be that the dna gets changed but in acquired traits there is no change in dna right and as a result we see that characters cannot be inherited right 
one's look can be said to be acquired to an extent actually Arya only to an extent right because see a part of our looks also comes as an inherited part right so that is what we understand by acquired and inherited and this is a short short question so please everybody please make a note of it ma'am are germ cells and gametes the same yes they are thank you Iram thank you so much now for everybody who will who was asking right ma'am why did Mendel choose pea plant easy three mark question why did Mendel choose pea plant now as everybody gives me the answer for those of you who are going to start spamming in the chat for menti I will do menti once I finish 15 questions and our aim is to finish it off in the next 20 minutes right yes and I need you to give me the answer yes Kushi this is your question which is why I told you I have a question based on this okay because it has several contrasting characters see three points you will get three marks okay distinctive traits detectable contrasting characters yes lifespan is less bisexual it's fast to grow extreme differences amazing amazing more answers coming my way brilliant right so why is or why did Mendel use this first and foremost he had uh, peas exhibit clear contrasting characters now we also see that they had a shorter lifespan and it was easy to maintain these plants and we see that it produces a lot of seeds at one go right and we see that because they had bisexual flowers we could see that they could be cross pollinated and self pollinated right so artificial cross pollination or manual cross pollination was also possible so in this case for three marks any three points out of this you can write one mark for each point right so in this case pea plants are easy to grow contrasting characters many seeds short lifespan I have given you seven points out of which you can write any three right write three points you will get three marks for this put a star mark for this question because chances of this question coming are very high right ma'am a musician of a son is a great musician ma'am a musician is a son of a great musician is it acquired or inherited trait acquired because see at the end of the day it's not like as soon as he's born he'll start playing the guitar or the piano he needs to be trained in it right so it is an acquired trait it's not like he being playing a, so imagine if my mother's a dancer right my mother is a dancer and I love to dance now it's not that as soon as I was born I started dancing right but as a matter of fact I had to be trained over time so in this case when you think about it it will be an acquired trait because it's not something and it could also be that there are great sportsmen whose children are not sportsmen so it's not always a uh, inherited it's an acquired one only are we clear shall we move on yes so that's a very good question Sonix why did Mendel not get the recognition so I'll tell you what when Mendel did these experiments and back in those days see right now when an experiment is there or when a uh, when, when some discovery is being made there's a lot of medium through which you can communicate that this has happened but Mendel was doing this in the late 19th and 18th century where it was not very easy and a lot of people would not immediately accept all of this as well because it disrupts what they know already so it took a long time for this to come up because of over time of research only then like much later maybe after them uh, you know after he passed away as well right only then did all of this come into the picture so communication um, platform for you know presenting all of this work wasn't there at that point right so which is why it happened to Mendel in this manner now moving on to question number five I have tweaked this question a little bit but in the following cases write the characteristics of the progeny here you need to write the phenotype okay you have the phenotype it is a dihybrid cross that you need to do Rano in maybe the next 15 minutes first one these are this is your cross you have capital R capital R capital Y capital I other one is easy peasy what is the first one thank you Arya ma'am if genetic change then you like to die it, see that's the thing no not like dancing is going to change my genes <coughs> yes very good uh, you will have to so for those of you who are not able to see the font please uh, go to settings and increase the go ahead and uh, increase the uh, change the settings this question is for four marks one mark for each that you identify progeny is offspring so in this case see both are homozygous same genetic constitution so this will be round and yellow 
right because we know that if it is dominant one more thing both are capital r capital r capital y capital y that means we are talking about dominant traits and we know that round seed shape and yellow seed color is dominant so you need to write that okay very important now moving on to the next one which is slightly tricky you have a heterozygous condition okay you have capital r small r capital y small y which will then cross with capital r small r capital y small y this is your dihybrid ratio where you can get four possibilities of gametes, right? So what are you going to get for the second one? This is your proper dihybrid ratio coming here in 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Same thing that will come. So I need you to give me all the four possibilities in the answer. Round yellow, round yellow, wrinkled green, round. There is a mistake in this. Round yellow, somebody who told me round yellow, round yellow twice, there's one mistake. Harika, how to concentrate on studies? Bacha, first thing you need to do is to remove your distraction, right? You need to get rid of distraction. One is round yellow. Okay, fine, I agree. I'm writing round yellow. What else is going to be there? I'll write the answer in the side for this. I'm just going to put B and I'm going to write it in the side. Round yellow, okay, I agree. What about the other three phenotypes? Yes, very good Jayashree, very good, exactly. How can you all forget wrinkled and yellow? We have wrinkled, yellow. Then what do we have? Yes, very good. We will have round and green, right? And then we will have wrinkled and green. So you need to write all four, okay? Some of you are just telling me round yellow, round yellow. Don't get confused, all right? So this is how you need to write. Now the next one, you have small r, small r, small y, small y. What is it going to be? Very easy. What is the third one? Option number C. Go to settings. Okay, go to settings. You will, there's a gear like thing on top, right? A gear like thing on top corner. Click on that, you'll be able to change it. Ma'am, what if this is only, what if it's only F1? Yes, this is only F1. But your parent is only in this, even if it is F1, this is your parent. So you'll write to, you'll have to write all four, right? Very good. Answer is wrinkled and green for this particular question. And the last one here is one pure uh, round and yellow plant with one pure wrinkled and green. What is the answer? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Katyani. I hope all of you have subscribed to the channel, right? If all of you are enjoying this class, please hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned. We have more amazing classes coming your way. Yes. Okay. Everybody is telling me, ma'am, round and yellow for the last one. Now, the last one is round and yellow. Okay. Last one is round and yellow. I have an additional question for you. Is this going to be homozygous round yellow or heterozygous round yellow? Yes. Homozygous round yellow or heterozygous round yellow. In the chat, I need you to tell me the answer. Homozygous or heterozygous? Very good. So proud of all of you for me to see the answer. It is going to be heterozygous. We see that of all offsprings will be of this format. Beautiful. So proud of you. So when you are writing the answer, you will get this for 2 marks. Actually, you will get this also for 4 marks. 1 mark for each of it and you will get the correct answer. Ma'am, what if the features? Very nice question I have. Ma'am, what are the features R and R are not mentioned? Uh, how, do you, how do you conclude that R is round? Okay. See, now the thing is, if... Normally, right, because you've been learning over it, right, whenever capital R is there, it always means that we're talking about the dominant trait, okay, and your R is with respect to dominant trait round, okay, so terminologies like T, R and Y, if they have already taught you, this is an assumption that they expect you to know, right, that T means tallness, R means shape of seed, Y means color, but if they give you something that is not taught to you, then they will specify it in the genotype, okay? But you will have to go ahead and understand this. Please explain the last one. See, the last one, what is it? It is capital R, capital R, cap 
capital Y, capital Y, small r, small r, small y, small y. So what are your gametes? All your gametes will have only this combination, right? So when they cross, what will you get? You will get a heterozygous one. So in this case, we know that in heterozygous condition, the dominant trait will only go. So this will be round and yellow. Are we clear? Yes, are we clear? Homozygous means similar pair. Heterozygous means dissimilar pair. Ma'am, explain second one. Oh, oh, I have to explain dihybrid cross. No problem. So we have this crossed with this, right? So this is your dihybrid cross that is there. So in this case, what are all your gametes? You will get one of this combination. You will get one of this combination, one of this and one of this. Same thing you will do on the other side, right? I am not going to do the cross because it will take me a while. But this is for you to understand, okay? Now when you do the cross in all of these cases, what are you going to get? You will get nine of them. This is the phenotypic ratio. Nine of them which are round and yellow, okay? You will get three of them which are wrinkled and yellow, right? Then you will get three of them which are round and green. Yes. And last may you will get one which is wrinkled and green. Okay. So I hope now we are clear with this. Yes. How are we clear? Ma'am, how, how do we identify if we should consider four parts? When you have both your parents in heterozygous condition. Look at it. Heterozygous, 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 heterozygous. When it is in heterozygous condition, then you know that you will get a combination of four gametes, right? So that is what we mean by it. Third one is very simple, bacha. Small r, small y, small y. Same thing is being crossed. And we know that these are the hetero, they are the homozygous recessive ones, which means they are wrinkled and green, right? Which is why you get this. So are we all clear? Are we all clear with this? <coughs> Everybody quickly. Yes, yes, I'm going to increase the pace. Okay, crystal clear, amazing. Let's move on. In a cross between plants with purple flowers and plants with white flowers, the F1 all had purple flowers. When F1 generation was self-bred, the F2 gave rise to 100 individuals, 75 of which had purple flowers. Make a cross and answer. Then you have two options that you need to answer. You have two subparts, okay? So this is easy. To, to your surprise, this is only a two mark question. What are the genotypes of F2 generation? I mean, this is a three mark question. So, and what is the percentage of purple flowered plants, okay? So now this is going to be very, very important. Three mark question. So now in this case, right? Everybody focus. You have purple flowers, okay? And they're saying that there are purple and white flowers. So let's assume that purple flowers are capital P, capital P. White flowers are small p, small p, okay? Now, here you only tell me the answer, right? Yes, all right. Now, on giving this, F1 had all purple flowers, right? So, all purple flowers are there in F1. Now, next what they're asking is, what is the genotype of F2? Can you tell me what is the genotypes? Yes? Genotypes, can you tell me? Ma'am, how to know if something is dominant or recessive? See, in your statement they are telling F1 and there was purple and white flowers and F1 generation got all purple. So in F1 generation, if all are purple, you immediately know that purple is the dominant color, right? While this one is the recessive color. Yes, 1 is to 2 is to 1 is the genotypic ratio. But here they are asking you what are the genotypes. Write the genotypes and send it to me. That is what I am waiting for. Everybody quickly. Yes. Why not heterozygous parent? If it was a heterozygous parent, right? If it was heterozygous parent, you will not get all purple flowers. You will get some which were white also, right? Which is what you need to understand. So in your F2 generation, what will you get? So you know that it is homozygous purple, homozygous white. Your F1 generation has all purple. So they're all heterozygous purple. In uh, When you do your normal monohybrid cross, what are you going to get? You will get one which is homozygous, um, 
homozygous dominant for purple, two which are heterozygous for this and one white flower which is this. So what are your genotypes? Capital P, small p, two of them which are capital, I mean one capital P, capital P, two capital P, small p and one small p, small p. So this is your genotype. You have to write the answer. If you don't write this, you write 1 is to 2 is to 1. Half mark only. You will lose marks there. Okay. So read the question. Are they saying genotype or genotypic ratio? Right. Yes. Ma'am, if it is not given, if it is not given, then you can't, you, we will not be able to finish the question. Right. So that is something that, I mean, we will not be able to answer it properly. Now the second one they asked. Okay. Let me just go back to that question. Let me just go back there. The second part of the question is, what is the percentage of purple flowers in F2? And they have told that in F2 flowers, if 100 individuals are there and 75 of them had purple flowers, what is the percentage of purple flowers? So easy. One mark you will easily get like this only. Right? Exactly. If 100 of them are there, out of which you have to get 75, 75 are purple percentage of it is nothing but 75 percent right so the correct answer here as you see is this so the first part of it holds two marks where you say that your combinations are capital p homozygous purple heterozygous purple and homozygous white flower while on the other hand the percentage of purple colored flowers are 75 percent very simple you write these two you will get three marks in your pocket now moving on to question number 7 everybody. Yes, question number 7. Uh, we'll quickly move on. Now this is going to answer some of the questions that you had, right? I have a question on that also. Uh, honey, if I'll explain that. Yes? Moving on to this one. A study found out that children with light colored eyes are likely to have parents with light colored eyes. On this basis, can we say uh, anything about whether the light color eye trait is dominant or recessive? Why or why not? Yes? Ma'am, why can't we take white as Y? Simply because Y is used for seed color. So we cannot do that. Right? Menti, we will do soon, bacha. Soon. Don't worry. Yes, Riddhi, of course. We will do that also. Don't worry. Let me know in the comment section of this video. I need first a yes or no. They are saying that they are likely. So they are saying that the ch children with light eye colored eyes are likely to have parents with light eye colored eyes. Now they are saying that parent, if child has light eye color, parent is also likely, okay, likely to have light eye color, okay. That is what it means by it. Can you say yes or no? Is it dominant or recessive? Yes, dominant as it... Are they saying majority? Are they saying majority of the kids are having this? Yes, it's not necessarily, right? Not necessarily because you imagine if all my... Imagine, okay, that there is some light eye colored, okay? Maybe light eye colored like blue or green. Okay, now here they are not saying is it blue, is it green, they are not specifying, they are just saying light eye colored in general, right? Now in this case also, what if both the parents are recessive? Now imagine eye color, I am taking it as B, okay? I am taking it as B. Now parents are BB, both parents are BB and most of them, the recessive trait is falling over. So in this case, if you think about it, you see that it's not necessarily that it has to be dominant. They are just saying that it's passing on from generation to generation. But they are not telling majority in any of the questions, right? So that is something you need to know. If they tell you they have nowhere mentioned majority, okay? And they have not at all given you anything in terms of the genotype. So you cannot say, when is it dominant? Only when a proper thing is given to you. They have not told you whether it's green or whether it's blue. There are many light eye colored also, right? It's not like only green color is light eyed or only blue color. So it's kind of telling dark eye colored. Dark eye color can be black or brown also, right? And within black or brown also, you have dominant and recessive. So in this case, if you think about it, it's not conclusive. So you should not say that, yes, ma'am, they said likely to have. So it is dominant. No, 
okay so you should start off by saying that in the given statement we cannot say with certainty whether light eye color is dominant or recessive because first and foremost we should know the variance of the trait and only then will we be able to understand whether it is dominant or recessive and in order to get a conclusive understanding we should be given the data of at least three generations your parental f1 f2 once that is given to us we will be able to identify so are we clear Pam, how can we notice if one eye, eye color is dominant or not? We'll not be able to notice it, but it depends. Like normally, you know, black eye, like it's based on the genetics that are there. Pam, how did experiments show that different traits are inherited differently? See, that is again based on the law of independent assortment, right? So that, that was the starting basis of understanding zonings. So shall we move on, everybody? Moving on to question number eight. Okay, very simple question now. State one advantage of variation in species. What are sex chromosomes? How many sex chromosomes are there? And name them, right? So this is a three mark question. One mark here, two marks here. Harika, how to avoid distractions? First and foremost, try to make sure that you have your, you know, phone and social media away. Try to use, you know, some study techniques where you tell yourself for 25 minutes, you will stay focused no matter what. So it will definitely help you, okay? Variation helps in evolution, okay, ensure survival of species, very good. Sandeep and Arya, stop having random conversations in the chat, please. Yes, very good. Helps in survival, very good, very good. Oh, how sweet, colleagues, how sweet. Amazing, right? There are only seven more questions, we'll wind it up soon. They're all very easy ones, okay. So what is one advantage of variations? We know that one major advantage of variation that is there is it increases chances of survival of organisms in a changing environment right and of course we also know that when we talk about variations we also understand that variations eventually contribute to evolution right so that was the first part of the question now the second part of the question is asking us what are sex chromosomes how many sex chromosomes are there name them what are sex chromosomes? Can you tell me in the chapter? I mean, in the uh, chat very quickly. Mira, by this weekend. Variations are necessary. Yes, very good. All right. They help us differentiate between male and female. Yes, very good. Survival of species. Awesome, awesome. Very good. So most of you know the answer to this, right? So what are sex chromosomes? They are nothing but the chromosomes. They are chromosomes that determine, right? So we see that these are chromosomes that determine the sex of the individual or you can say the gender of the individual, right? How many sex chromosomes are there? We know that there are two types of sex chromosomes. In males, we have XY. In females, we have XX, right? Very simple and easy. So now you can go ahead and write this down. So one mark you will get here, right? So you see that one mark you will get for writing the advantages of variation that it helps in increasing chances of survival. Two marks for writing this part, you will get a total of three marks, right? Okay. Yes, you can write that Madhu, not a problem. How is equal genetic contribution of male and female parents ensured in progeny? Because at the end of the day, we know that the genetic constitution should be same as the parent, right? And in sexual reproduction, we need to have equal contribution from male and female to maintain the overall chromosome number, right? So that is something that you need to write. Now, before I go ahead, here's a quick reminder for uh, Baiju's um, National Scholastic Person Personality Test because as you know, this weekend is the last weekend in which you can attempt the test and this of course is a very important one as of course it will give you hundred, uh, it'll give you a lot of scope for getting scholarships at Baiju's Tuition Center but along with that, it'll give you a detailed academic report on your overall analysis, your ca career capabilities, career inclination, so on and so forth. So everybody, please do register. The link is there in the description box right where should you log in link is there in the description below you can log in there Sandeep Samia does not want to talk to you but Samia wants to pay attention in class so Sandeep play, pay attention here as well okay so moving on to question number nine everybody I'm going to pick up the pace a little so that we can move ahead with Menti as well right so Menti will come in the next 10 minutes okay <coughs> now a lot of you are asking me questions based on blood group so here's a particular question a man with blood group A marries a woman with blood group O and their daughter has blood group O. Is this information enough to tell you which of the traits blood group A or O is dominant? 
why or why not okay so we have a man okay so he has i a i mean he has a group all right now at the same time if you think about it you have a woman right she has o o blood group now lot of you are telling me ma'am no but this is a trick question actually for all of you all right because in the previous question let me let me draw a parallel to the previous question in the previous question what was the terminology used terminology used was light i colored they never specified whether it was green whether it was brown or whether it was blue they just said light i color or dark i color so that is very vague right it is very very vague but in this case they are pinpointing and they will tell you a group o group okay this is information known right it is information known to us ma'am i skip this question i know okay so now for this you should have an understanding a little bit right you need to have an understanding a little bit on blood groups right so now o is a recessive group all right o is recessive while blood groups a and b that are there both of them are dominant groups okay and this actually comes in a whole different pool that you will learn later on which is on co dominance and all of that you don't need to worry o is not dominant to your surprise okay o is actually not dominant so in this case when you look at it right we see that it will either be ia or ia and it will be ia or io so these are the possible combinations for a group but o that is there is actually recessive right so this will either have only io io but in this case when you group it we see that we are getting a girl who is having o so what can we understand from this is this enough for us to understand if blood group a or o is dominant a is dominant right because in both cases we see that it's happening in the recessive condition so in this case you will have to elaborate i know this is like ma'am previous question you told me this is not enough i need three generations this question you told me ma'am what is this you have given me the answer i will tell you why read the terms which i used in the previous question like i said it is mentioned light eye color they never said black eyes they never said brown eyes they never said anything they gave you a very vague one but here what happened was they said that there is a man who has a blood group okay and there is a woman who has o blood group right so we see that there is a woman with o blood group now the child is having o group okay now as per our knowledge on blood groups we know that a is dominant okay a is dominant over o all right and what is happening we are seeing that the young one is getting o group that means that o is a recessive group right o is recessive over a now in this case we see that the given information was enough to tell that a is dominant over o because we know that for for the young one to have o it will express only in homozygous condition right but in this case when you think about it if if at all it is there in that way then it is recessive right so are we clear yes see whenever in your exam if they ask you for blood group based questions they will normally ask you a blood group versus o or they will ask you b blood group and o okay now another possibility will come and if at all it comes no it will be i a i a or it will be i a i o right or this will be i i b i b or this will be i b i o okay this is only the possible combinations that will come they will not ask you the latter one because that is a different concept altogether so don't worry about it class in sam 10 please unnecessarily don't spam in the chat right ma'am why is it that the blood group of parent should not match that is a different video i've done a video on blood grouping you can definitely check that out right nitya shri i think i have class i have you know uh, clarified your doubt yes okay is this from ncert this was from a pyq which is why we have taken it can we assume any no no don't assume any letter use i a i b okay please do that once again ma'am why can't we declare o is dominant because o is not dominant and as per research and as per blood grouping system we see that i a right i a there is i b 
and I O. There are actually three genes which code for it, right? Out of which these two are dominant, while these two are suppressive. Which is why if there is a homozygous, so if there is a parent who is homozygous dominant, right? So if he is homozygous dominant for blood group A and there is a woman who is homozygous dominant for blood group O, the offspring will always have blood group A, right? So that is something you need to understand. And yes, you can take a quick screenshot. AB blood group is when it is both IA and IB, right? When it is both IA and IB, it is a blood group AB. Yes, very good. Ma'am, how can we judge if one is dominant or no based on your F1 generation? Can it come as O and A? Yes, it can come as O and A, right? Ma'am, can child have blood group O if parents have blood group A and B? If both of them are heterozygous for blood group A and B, then possible. If not, not possible, right? Okay, now I'm going to pick up the pace and move on to the next one. Give reasons for the appearance of new combination of characters in F2 progeny. Why is it that there is combination or why are new characters popping up in F2 pro, uh, progeny? Very quickly. Why is it happening? Yes? Yeah, you can take that also Bharat. Not a problem. We can take that. Surprisingly, oh, that is their law. Yes. Now I need you to identify which law we are talking about. Right? Which law are we talking about here? Because of two parents, okay. Yes. Where can I join Crash Course? Bacha, just hit the subscribe button on this channel. You have joined, right? Yes. Law of segregation and independent assortment. Very good. Exactly. Right? Yes. So why are new combinations appearing? Because we know that when gamete formation takes place, alleles of two or more genes, they get sorted out independently. They are not dependent on anything else. They get sorted independently. So we see that there are some, uh, you know, gametes which receive some kind of genes while the other will receive another kind, right? So why exactly do we observe new characters in F2? It's given by the law of independent assortment which states that two pairs of traits are combined in a hybrid. One pair of characters will segregate independently to the other pair, right? And we know that in dihybrid cross, you can give an example of how if there is one, uh, you know, if we have parents which are homozygous, uh, you know, dominant and homozygous recessive, we see that a lot of new traits are introduced much later in the F2, right? No, honey, if you don't have a rare blood group, it's common only. O blood group is very common, right? Yes. So you need to write these two points. And of course, this normally does not come for five marks, but it normally comes for two to three marks. Okay. So you can mention about both laws of segregation and laws of independent assortment. Now moving on to the next one. Question number 11, right? Question number 11, which is again a three mark question. What are genes? Where are they located in our body? Right? One mark. How are characteristics or traits inherited through genes? Yes? Ma'am, can we use monohybrid cross? See, if you are mentioning about um, independent assortment, you'll have to talk. So, it's easy to talk in terms of dihybrid than monohybrid, right? So, Shreya and everybody out there who have a lot of doubts on blood grouping, I have actually taken and recorded a video on blood groups. So, please go to the channel, type blood grouping by Aishwarya ma'am, you will be able to find a video, right? So, I'm sure all of you will be able to have a better understanding of it. So, based on blood group, because I don't want to waste too much time explaining that and I've already done the video, you can check it out on the channel. Yes, Apurva, we'll be doing a separate session on that altogether, so don't worry, okay? Yes, very good, very good. Small segment of DNA, amazing. So what are genes? They are specific segments of DNA that control the expression of a character or that code for a particular character. Now, where do we find this DNA? We find it in the chromosomes that are located in the nucleus, right? So that is, this is where we find the genes. We find them in the chromosomes. And we can say that they are the heredity units as well. Very good. Now, second part of the question is, how are these characters inherited through genes? How are they exacted, uh, I mean, how are they inherited? We know that this happens during the process of DNA copying, right? So 
so we know that during sexual reproduction we know that there is dna copying that takes place and when formation of gametes takes place there is one copy which comes from the father one copy from the mother and we see that when they come together we see that they contribute equally making up the genetic constitution and that is how traits that are there are transmitted from parent to offspring so when you are writing it you will have to elaborate it right so start with doing this one you will get one mark and this second part can come for four to five marks because it can also be along the lines of how is it that contribution of parents should be equal for maintaining genetic constitution right so you'll have to write these points a pair of genes of each characteristics are necessary right and we know that one pair will come from the mother one will come from the father and they make up the genetic constitution right so this is very very important you need to elaborate on all of these points you will get four marks out of it because at the end of the day the chromosomal number should be balanced so are we clear with this are we clear everybody give me a quick thumbs up in the chat can you give me a thumbs up ma'am fully genetics does not matter it's not like that it does matter to an extent right Ma'am, can be explained using Punnett square or points as compulsion. Only if Punnett square is absolutely necessary, right? If Punnett square is not, you can use the Punnett square to support your answer. That is definitely there. That's not a problem. You can do it. Now moving on to question number twelve, everyone. Very simple. We have already discussed this. I don't think I need to spend more time. But nonetheless, you know how important this question is, right? How is the sex of a newborn determined in humans? Yes. So what will you do for this particular one? Actually, Shalini, this is an example of using a Punnett square, right? This is a very easy question. You can explain using Punnett square. I don't know Marathi bacha, so it'll be very tough. Yes, you will get the PDF of this particular session. It'll be there on the Telegram channel. Yes, but here they're saying how is the sex of the newborn determined? That means you will have to say the whole story, right? So when you talk about sex determination, we know that in the case of males, the gametes we could see that some sperms could have X, while some could have Y. While in the case of females, all of them will have X, right? While in this case, when you do the cross, we see that there's a fifty percent of chance that it will be a girl, fifty percent chance that it will be a boy. So when you are writing this particular question. You need to say that it's normally genetically determined, and the genes will determine it. So we know that um, based on the inheritance of the chromosome from the parents, if an X chromosome is inherited from the father, it will be a girl. But if a Y chromosome is inherited, it will be a boy, right? And we know that at all times the X chromosome, one X chromosome will definitely come from the mother, right? Yes. See, I am not going into genotypic ratio of dihybrid cross because that is not necessary, right? It is not necessary for your examination point of view, so I am not going to go into details of that. Now, moving on to question number thirteen, very simple and easy question, right? Question number thirteen, everybody. Why do all gametes formed in human females have X chromosome? Two marks. Super duper easy. Yes, ma'am. Why should be Y should be inherited from the father. See, father ka will have X and Y. So some sperms will have 22 plus X. Some will have 22 plus Y, right? So the Y will always come from the father, and the sex of the baby is there, right? Sex of the baby is determined by the father. Ma'am, reason for reason for variation in sexual reproduction can we say errors? not always right errors in dna copying is normally seen in unicellular organisms right variation in unicellular organisms is through error in dna copying but variation in multicellular organisms and especially in sexually reproducing organisms like humans it's through random mixing of alleles right so that is one thing that you need to do all right so now of course we know why do all gametes formed in human females have it because at the end of the day the sex chromosome pair is 44 plus xx which is why all gametes have x chromosome so it's a simple two mark question wherein all you need to write is human females have two x chromosomes which is why during gamete formation when the number becomes half all of them will have 22 plus x right very simple and easy Mira kindly do not spam about environment chapter as i have already told you we will be doing a recorded video on that and of course it will be there on the channel we will complete it but kindly refrain from spamming in the chat okay 
Yes. How much time left for Menti? Five more minutes after which I am going to start. Okay. Question number 14. Somebody was asking me about pea plant. So this is for all of you. Give the pair of contrasting traits of following characters in the pea plant and mention which is dominant and recessive. Now you have yellow seed and round seed. Okay. So now you need to tell, give the pair of contrasting traits. Okay. So identify what is the trait that we are talking about. What is the character that we are talking about. Yes. Kis condition mein hote hai? See, like I said, if we are talking about identical and fraternal twins, right? If you look at it as a broader picture, you cannot understand it. But if you pick one one character, you will find identical, you will find some similarities and you will find some differences, right? So that is something. It's okay, colleagues. They would have made a mistake, bacha, but don't get so worked up about it. We will go ahead and we will do it for you. Don't worry. Exactly. This is seed color, right? So here we are talking about seed color and which is recessive and which is yellow seed. Yellow seed, here we are talking about seed color, right? So which is the contrasting character to this? Yes, yellow seed ka contrasting character is what? Yellow seed ka contrasting character is what? Exactly, it is green. Out of which, which is dominant and which is recessive? Can you tell me? Both are dominant. Green and yellow, both are dominant. Very good. Green seed. Yellow is dominant. Huh, very good. So yellow here is dominant. While green here is recessive. Now you have round. Round seed is with respect to seed shape. So you have round seed and which seed? Round seed and what? Two marks. Easy peasy. Two marks you will get for this. Right? Very good. This is wrinkled, right? The contrasting character is wrinkled. And we know that round is dominant and wrinkled is recessive. So in this shape, when you look at it, we see that for seed shape, round is dominant, wrinkled is recessive. Yellow is dominant while green is recessive. You write this, you will get two marks for this. Easy peasy in your pocket, you will get two marks, right? Now moving on to the last question, question number 15. What is dominant and recessive? Dominant is one which will always express itself both in homozygous and heterozygous condition. When you talk about recessive, it will only express when in homozygous or similar condition. Right? So last question that was there. Ma'am, which uh, letter should we use for more clarity? So for round, you have to use RR. For wrinkle, use small r, small r. Yellow, capital Y, capital Y, green, small Y, small Y, okay? And when you're writing this Y and all, be careful, okay? Don't write small Y like this. It can be confusing. Do a loopy loop that will help you out with it. Now, here is another trick question for all of you. Question number 15. The gene for red hair is recessive for gene. So, now they've told you very clearly. They don't want to get you confused. So, they're saying black hair is dominant over red hair right they're saying red hair is recessive what is the hair color of the person if he inherits a gene for red hair from mother and gene for black hair from his father what will he have they have already told you red is recessive they've already given you the answer right ma'am our characters are characters like learning dancing music transferred no they are not they're acquired characters right yes very simple and easy. They have already told you what is what. And in this case, we see that if he's getting red hair from mother and black hair from father, chances are that him having black hair will be higher. Which is why the correct answer is option number one. So with this everybody, we have completed our 15 subjective question. Now before I go ahead, how many of you are like, ma'am, ab heredity ka to, we know what to do, right? How many of you are feeling this? We've got this. We know what to do. Yes. How many of you are feeling more confident about heredity than when you came for this class? Right? It's easy, no? It's very simple. It's very easy. All you need to do is to pay attention on the basics. Right? Kushi, I'll have to calculate and check. You let me know in the comments of this video. I will reply back to you. Am I saying I'm not that confident? But am I before you started and after watching this, how are you feeling better? 
I just want that, right? If you're feeling better, then I have achieved. Okay, that is what I want to do. I will know that this chapter overnight is very tough to go, right? But if you're able to identify your weak points, you are able to understand on how to go about it, right? Exactly, not 100% confident, but we know practice is there. Then don't worry. That is all we need to do, right? So now before I go ahead with the mentee, here are some quick simple tips that will help you study better, right? This particular chapter. So first and foremost with questions, as we know, we need to be reading the questions a little more carefully, right? So you need to understand what is the question. So spend some time, identify keywords, especially in your exam. You all tend to miss out on the keywords, right? That's why I'm telling you that you go ahead, read the keywords, break it down, see what is given, write it down and then go ahead and solve it. And wherever needed, use flowcharts or punit squares. It will definitely help you. Now, along with this, if when you are studying, right, it, it will help you in learning. Like, especially if you want to do gene versus allele, character versus trait, genotype, phenotype. Use table so that revision becomes simple. And of course, make sure that use, you know, prefixes. Like mono means, you know, it's one. Di means it's two, right? So things like that make it very easy. And of course, last but not the least, you always know that you know, practice courses, our crash courses are here for you. And if you want to come back and you want to watch the video again, do that also. That will definitely help you out, right? And here at this point, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button in this channel. And knowing how much practice you need for this particular chapter, tomorrow at 11 a.m., Ankita Ma'am and I are coming together where we are going to be solving top 15 questions from this chapter, Heredity and Evolution. So tomorrow morning, we are having a class at 11 a.m. So even if you have school, you may not be able to watch it live. It's okay. You watch the recorded bit of it. But tomorrow itself, we are going to be coming live with this so that by tomorrow, Heredity will be in your pocket, right? So this is going to be very, very important. So everyone quickly hit the like button on this video because now you know how much we take your preparation seriously, right? Yes, amazing. Oh, that's awesome. But don't miss school, okay? Don't miss school, all of you. Now moving on to the next one where, of course, before I get started, reminder on the All India Mock Test Board Exam by Akash Baijus, which will definitely help you out to gauge your potential. So this is happening between Feb, Feb 5th to Feb 12th of this particular month for class 10 and 12. So as you all know, this is going to be a paper set by Akash Baijus, wherein you will be able to give get a mock paper, right? So this will also help you with the practice. The registrations are absolutely free. Free last day to register is 4th of Feb. So with this, of course, I have given you five hacks and some amazing news on the PYQs. With this, of course, let's go to 15 MCQ questions. And everyone, as we all know, go to www.menti.com. Hit the code 57845490, right? Ma'am, will we be able to see the video? You might have to toggle between the videos during Menti, but Madhu, you will be able to see it, right? And everyone who just joined the class, please make sure that you hit the like button. We need to have at least 350 likes on this video. Vishnu, do we have 350 likes? Yes, everybody. Let me have a quick look. All right, amazing everybody. Quickly go ahead and like the video. Vishnu sir is not here, but Pradeep sir is there. So go ahead and like the video. And Pradeep, I'm going to be switching the screen. So can we please pause the video? I mean, freeze the screen so that I can switch. Yes? Can I quickly make the switch? All right. Yes, yes. We will go ahead, but we just need to set up the screen. So we will quickly move. And yes, I have switched the screen and we can get started. I will not spend too much time in the menti. Okay, now you all know the answers. We have done all the revision. So we are going to get started. Okay, 54 of you are here. So let's see everybody. I need all of you to join. The code again is 57845490. Yes, all right. No, no, he's not the one who puts you on timeout. Okay, now. How many of you want to do a quick um, 
What do you say? Rapid fire, where in the next 15 minutes we wind up the mentee. Shall we keep 9.15 as our aim, wherein in the next 15 minutes we do 15 questions. Are we ready for this? Yes, are we all ready for this? Yes, ma'am. So, are we now? Fastest finger first, okay? Now, this is full rapid fire time. But wherever we need time, you will get the time to solve, alright? So, let's get started, everybody. <coughs> Okay, all right, I didn't know. So let's get started. I have a hundred odd kids. Yes, heart-eyed cat is there. All of you are here. Well done, everyone. So let's get started with the menti quiz. So question number one, everybody, on your screens now, right? Okay, exchange of genetic material takes place in dash. Is it vegetative reproduction, sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction or budding? Very easy question, right? When does sex exchange of genetic material take place? I almost gave the answer. Yes, everyone, quickly. What do you think is the correct answer to this? Very good, everybody. Very good. So when we talk about exchange of... <laughs> yeah, I know. I gave the answer away. So when you talk about exchange of genetic material, we are also talking about how we know that there is DNA copying and mixing that happens during sexual reproduction. Very simple question. For those of you who got a mistake, I hope you are now clear. Now moving on to question number two, everybody. On your screens now. Okay? A cross between a tall pea plant, genotype is given in bracket, and sh short pea plant resulted in progeny that are all tall because of what reason? Super duper, super duper, super duper, super duper easy. Read the statement. Now don't be in a hurry to just finish answering. Read the statement. These are how your MCQs will come, right? Your objective questions in your exam are going to come in this manner. And if you're going to rush and write the answer, this is not going to happen, right? Yes, very good. Now, those of you who got wrote option B, don't read the chat. Chat is misleading you, okay? But see, they're saying that you have a homozygous tall crossed with a homozygous dwarf. All of them are tall. Why? Why are all of them tall? Because at the end of the day, tallness is a dominant trait, right? So, correct answer is option C. Yes? Now, moving on to the next one. All my legends giving... For those of you who went wrong, I hope it was a misclick. But for those of you who got confused, I hope now you are clear. Now, moving on to question number three, everybody. Thank you, Devansh, for helping me out of the code. Which of the following statements is not correct with respect to variation? Read the statements correctly. We are talking about which of the following is not correct with respect to variation. Yes? Read it. Don't be in a hurry to answer. Very good, everybody. Very good. Now, for those of you, ma'am, isn't this question? Yes, it is not exactly from it, but it's a little bit along the lines. They can ask you a similar kind of question, right? So, we know that not all variations are beneficial, right? And we know that all variations in the species have equal chances. Not exactly. Some, could, some variations could not be helpful also. But we know the change in genetic material leads to variation. And it's normally also caused by environmental factors and it's minimum mainly seen in a sexual sexual reproduction than in asexual reproduction which is why the correct answer is option a now moving on to the next one question number four everybody on your screens now right after question number five we will have a leaderboard because variations can be influenced by environmental conditions also that statement is true Arya. so now moving on to question number four everybody on your screens now from the list given below, identify the character which can be acquired but not inherited. So, identify the acquired character. Eye color, skin color, size of body, nature of hair. Very easy question. 
विच कैन नॉट बी इनहेरिटेड बट कैन बी अक्वायर्ड वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन आई नीड ऑल ऑफ यू टू गिव मी दी आंसर टू दिस very good everyone very good because we know color of eye color of skin nature of hair are all inherited but size of body is acquired and tanish now you know the answer to this question and i hope you gave the correct answer in your exam so question number 5 everybody before we have a look at the leaderboard let's have a look at question number 5 the two versions of a trait which are brought in by male and female gamete is situated where this is tricky you have one trait coming from father one trait coming from mother right and we know that these are based on same shape and same size right so will it come on two different chromosome it will come on sex chromosome it will come on any chromosome or it will come on corresponding homologous chromosomes yes so see this was a very tricky question they have told you two versions of any trait they didn't tell you that it was male or female or anything they said any two traits hair color eye color whatever it may be right any two traits one comes from father one comes from mother and i told you that these pairs of chromosomes are based on shape and size so these are corresponding chromosomes or they are homologous chromosomes right now what do your sex chromosomes do they determine the sex of the individual right it's not necessarily that it is contributing to the trait your keyword was two versions of the trait that is your alleles they were asking about alleles right can it be any chromosome can i take one chromosome some random chromosome from father and mother no because they need to come together in a pair right when will it come together in a pair they will come together when they are homologous right so in 46 chromosomes you have 23 pairs pair 1 pair 2 pair 3 how are these pairs coming one from father one from mother and they are of same shape and size so they are corresponding right are you sure about that i am 100% sure of this right so the correct answer is option d so are we clear with this are we clear are we clear about this particular question on why it is corresponding homologous chromosomes and not sex chromosomes right are we all clear okay very good so now let's have a look at the leader board right let's have a look at the leader board and let's see what the leader board says now i can see that some of you are doing really well ha huh, nitish real explain it once again so i can see vaishnavi is the fastest followed by navya mantesha shreya shar atmadeep jeet aditi wolf meister and diksha well done everybody well done now for those of you who had a doubt in the previous question now you have 23 pairs from your i mean you have 23 chromosomes coming from father 23 coming from mother they'll come together and you'll get 46 but we always say that there are 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs now if you look at pair 1 pair 2 pair 3 each pair is made in such a way that they are of same shape and size right and we see that they are coming from the that pair is coming from one from father one from mother and they are forming the pair now these chromosomes are what we call as homologous chromosomes right or corresponding chromosome now imagine there is chromosome number 1 and chromosome number 70 those are random chromosomes right they will not have any relation okay in the sense that what they code for will be very different so two versions of a trait coming from father and mother will not come in any two chromosomes but in this way right so that is something that you need to understand so now with this of course well done to everybody on the leaderboard and don't worry about others who are there um don't worry about your ranks you will definitely do better just believe in yourself and with that confidence we are moving on to question number 6 so question number 6 everybody on your screen now select the statements that describe the characteristics of genes you have four statements from which you need to identify the correct answer take your time don't be in a hurry i have only two things to tell you quickly everybody <coughs> so
See, you have 45 seconds to answer this question. Nobody is in a hurry. We have 121 participants, Rasputin. 121. Very good, everybody. Very good. Now, most of you have got the correct answer, which is option number 1 and 3. Statement number one says that genes are specific sequences of bases in a DNA. If you see the word sequence segment, you know that the answer is correct, right? So option number one is correct about gene. Now, option number two says that gene does not code for protein. Not true because I told you that for a gene to be expressed, it will produce, um, it will produce proteins, right? So option number two is incorrect. Option number three says that in individuals of a given species, a specific gene is located on a particular chromosome. Yes, that statement is also true, right? So the correct options here are one and three. And of course, each chromosome has only one gene. No, each chromosome can have many genes. So correct answer here is option number B. So for those of you who got confused, I hope now you are clear. And now with this, we are moving on to question number seven. Yes, so question number seven, everybody will be there on your screens now. In a pea plant, a pure tall plant is crossed with a pure short plant. What is the ratio of pure tall to pure short in F2? This is very simple. Don't overcomplicate the question. Very easy. Pure tall. Pure short. I am stressing on these words. Rani and others. Felix. If people are sad, they will talk about it, but you need to spend time. I knew this would happen. Guys, you have a pure tall plant, which is crossed with a pure short plant, right? So capital T, capital T, crossed with small t, small t. In F1, what you will get? Capital T and small t, right? Now in F2, what you will do? You will take two heterozygous and cross it. So you will get one homozygous tall, two heterozygous tall, one homozygous dwarf. Now what is the question? Ratio of pure tall plants. If it is pure means what should you write? Pure means you should write homozygous, right? You should write homozygous tall. So how many homozygous tall do you find? You find only one homozygous tall, right? While on the other hand, how many do you find? You find homozygous short. Ma'am, I did not understand. Okay, one minute. Do we have, uh, just one minute Vishnu, let it be in this way. Do we have the, yeah. Okay. So let me just make this full screen now. All right. Now this is very simple. I know why you all got confused, but nonetheless. Okay. So you had tall, tall crossed with short, short. What did you get at the end of it? You got this in your F1. Now in F2, what do you need to do? You crossed this with this. So what will you get? You will get one tall two of them which are like this and you will get this. Now they are asking ratio of pure tall plant. You have only one. So you have one capital T and one small t, small t. Ratio is one is to one, right? So now I hope all of you are clear with this. Okay. So now moving on to the next one. Yes, rapid fire, but I had to explain this. So I hope now you are clear. Moving on to question number eight, everybody. Question number eight on your screen now. Now, for those of you who are having parallel conversation in chat, kindly avoid having them. Okay, a normal cell of a human body consists of 23 pairs of chromosomes. The number of chromosomes in a sex cell of a human being is most likely to be how? Ma'am, would we have TT as a gamete? No. If it is monohybrid cross, you will either have either one T. If it's monohybrid, only one, right? Rani, Gara, all of you, please. Please stay focused. Gaurav, I think. Yes. Very good, everybody. Very good. But for 36 of you who got confused, number of chromosomes in a sex cell. Sex cell is your gamete. Gamete will have half the number of chromosomes. So if my normal skin cell has 46, how much will be there in the gamete? Gamete will have only half. It will have 23. So the correct answer is option B. Rajiv, if, Rajiv, if you don't, um, I don't think you asked me a relevant question. So you can ask your question once again. But if it is not relevant to what I am teaching right now, please avoid or refrain from asking. Right? Please explain this once again. Normal cell has 23 pairs. 23 pairs means how much? It is 46. 
Then they are saying how much is there in a sex cell. Sex cell will have only half the number of chromosomes. Only 23 will be there. So correct answer is option B, 23. Now moving on to the next question. Okay, question number 9 everyone. I wanted to do rapid fire. So let's go a little faster. Question number 9 on your screen. A zygote which has inherited X chromosome from the father will develop into what? Very, very easy question. Zygote has inherited X chromosome from the father. What will it be? Ma'am, difference between gamete, gene and allele. Gamete is the sex cell. Gene is present inside the gamete that codes for a character. Alternative forms of it is what you call as Alternative forms is what you call as um, the alley. Very good. Because we know that if 22 plus X comes from the father and it crosses with the mother, which will already have 22 plus X, we will get 44 plus XX in the zygote, which is nothing but baby girl. Now moving on into next one, not baby boy. Baby boy should have Y chromosome, right? So question number 10, everybody on your screen. I mean, incorrect DNA copying can alter reproduction process. Yes, it can alter the reproduction process in terms of so in unicellular organisms, it can cause um, it can cause alteration in terms of it can result in variation. Or in some cases, like in the case of multicellular organisms, it can cause other conditions as well. Right? Okay. All right, everybody. So one of the following traits of the parents cannot be passed on to their future generation. Which among it is it? Afreen, what did you not understand, bacha? Derek, I'm just a loud person. Please don't say that. Very good. See, pointed chain, broad chain, they are all features which are normally inherited, right? So they are normally inherited from parent to offspring. Cleft is also a condition which is inherited. But scar chain, imagine if I fall down and I hurt myself and I got a scar. That is not something I get from my parent, right? So that is what we mean by it. Scarred is when you fall down and you get hurt and there's a mark. That's not something you get from your parent. So that is of course an acquired trait. And just because that scar is there, it will not go from parent. It will not go from parent to offspring, right? So this is an acquired one. So now moving on. I mean, injury is not transferred. No, if you fall down and you get a wound, your parents would have also fallen down. You don't have the same wound, right? So that is something. Now moving on everybody, leaderboard and I can see that Vaishnavi is still on top with 9,344 points, followed by Shreya, Anshul, Mantesha, Navya, Atmadeep, Krish, Minakshi, MLB Dreamer and Jisman Singh, 10th grade. Well done all of you, well done, yes, all right. Colleagues, whatever you did not understand, you should tell me specifically so that I can go ahead. And with this, of course, last five questions, everybody. Last five questions, we are going to speed it up. Any more doubts? See, whatever doubts that have been missed out today, we will anyway take it up during the PYQ session. So don't worry about it, right? Don't feel like, ma'am, you didn't answer my doubt. Whatever, maybe I miss out on one or two today will be taken up tomorrow morning as well. So don't worry about this, okay? So moving on to question number 11, everybody, on your screens now. In human beings, in humans, if gene B gives brown eyes and gene B gives blue eyes, what will be the color of eyes of a person having the combination capital B, small b? Very easy. Very easy question. <coughs> Quickly everybody, just give me one moment. All right, very good everyone, very good. I can see that most of you have got it. Now they're saying that capital B gives brown eyes, small b is blue. That means that at the end of the day, what are you getting? You're getting heterozygous dominant, that means it will be brown eyes, right? So correct answer here is option B. Ma'am, but they didn't give B as dominant. They didn't give B as dominant, but they said gene B and they represented it in capital letter. So if capital letter is mentioned, that means it is dominant, right? So that is also another way in which they can give you questions, okay? 
So now moving on to question number 12, everybody. Question number 12 on your screens. Rajiv, Rajveer, Krishal, all of you rewind back to the beginning of this video. You will be able to find the definitions. Question number 12. In human males, all chromosomes are paired perfectly except one. These or this unpaired chromosomes are which all? This is a very easy guys, super duper easy question. Very simple and I know V, 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 easy, super easy this is. You don't even need me to explain anything in this. Very good. The correct answer is 3 and 4. See, large and small is not a way of understanding like they are perfectly paired, right? Because others are perfectly paired in terms of homologous, yes? But X and Y that you see is not perfectly paired because you have one large X chromosome and a small Y chromosome, right? So this is something that you need to understand. Now moving on to question number 14. Now we'll do a similar kind of question again tomorrow. So don't worry about it. Or what I would suggest is you go back after this session, pause this particular question and try to solve it once again. It will definitely help you out. Now moving on to question number 14 everyone. Question number 14. If the sex of the child is male, it depends on what, right? What does it depend on? You have four options from which you need to identify the correct answer. I think that particular question is also there in one of your sample papers. It's also there in some of your PYQs. So this is very, very important that you understand how to go about it, right? See, if the sex of the child is male, what does it depend on? It depends on the Y chromosome in the zygote, right? Y chromosome is what determines whether if it is male. If Y chromosome is not there, it is female. Now with this, of course, everybody, we are moving on to the last question for today. Question number 15 on your screens now, right? So if there's a cross between two individuals results in a ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, you have four possible phenotypes. This is an example of what? Dihybrid, monohybrid, test cross, none of the above. 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is which cross ratio? Now for those of you who are telling me, ma'am, some of my doubts are not clear. So what we will do, um, Sumit, we'll be having it soon, don't worry. Kanika, we're almost done with the mentee, so it's okay, right? So we probably next mentee you can join. Others, be part of tomorrow's morning class, right? We'll do question number 13 once again in that particular class as well, Mani Megalai. Yes, very good. The correct answer here is option number A, dihybrid cross. So with this, of course, everyone, we come to the end of today's class, right? And we'll have a look at the final leaderboard. Yes, final leaderboard. Let's see what it says. I can see there's Vaishnavi who's done really well today with 13,852 13, 13, points. Then I can see Shreya, Navya, Mantesha, Anshul. Somebody who's the best girl, Minakshi, Atmadeep, MLB Dreamer. Arya, ma'am, I got 74 in my pre-board. Amazing, everybody. Amazing. And I can see that a lot of you are sharing me your ranks as well. And I can see that a lot of you have progressed as well. So very quickly in the chat, everybody, I want you to tell me, how are you feeling now? Are you feeling confident? Are you feeling good about this particular class? Are you feeling confident about heredity? And I'm sure that after you attend tomorrow's morning session with Ankita ma'am and me, I'm really sure that all of you will feel double, triple confident as well so that we do more and more questions, right? So don't be nervous. Don't be worried. We are here for you. Don't at all be worried. You have got us covered, right? So as you all know, with this, we have achieved doing our chapter summary 15 subjective questions, hacks to study the chapter, and 15 MCQs for mentee.
and everybody do not worry about this particular chapter we are here we've got you covered we will be doing more and more practice so all we request you to do is to make sure that you like this video if there are some doubts which i have probably not resolved you can let me in the comments you can let me know in the comments of this video but if you enjoyed today's class, you should also tell me in the comments of this video so that our team gets motivated by this. And show us your love by liking the video, sharing this with your friends and staying subscribed to our channel. Up until then, everybody, take care and I will see you all very soon. Lots of love and bye-bye.